Hey everybody, and welcome to the Windlane Road Podcast with Lucas and DK. I'm Lucas. Hey guys, what's going on? Lucas, you good? I'm good, man. I'm real good. Glad it's Wednesday. Glad it's Wednesday night. These Wednesday nights are starting to become a regular. We're we're kind of bouncing around for a little while. This is our This is about the only time we can really get together, put it together. <laughs> yeah, this time of year is pretty busy for me on Saturdays, and it's about to be real busy for for you all the time. All the time. Thirteen weeks or twelve? Thirteen weeks left. Thirteen weeks. Twelve and some change, really. I'm feeling strong today. You're uh uh how old is your baby now? Five months. Five months old. Is it past the crying stage at that point or no? No, I woke up at one thirty, two thirty, three fifteen, and four fifteen when my alarm went off today. And Lindsay's saying, "Hey, let's just please, please, please go to sleep <laughs> for God's sake, kid. Just go to sleep." I don't hear anything. Mm-hmm. Mike Tyson could punch me in the face, and I'd probably roll over the other side. <laughs> I'm a hard sleeper, man. But she, uh, I feel so bad for her, you know, because I mean, this kid's. He's a happy baby mm-hmm. all the time. <laughs> Can't sleep in it. Can't sleep. And, you know, he was getting better for a while, but in Florida, he was just laid up chilling in bed, just like. Kick back, relaxing. Uh, yeah, because we were laid like the best bed ever. Yeah. So we're going to have to invest a new bed or something. I don't know what his deal is at home, but it's not um, It's not going good for the missus right now. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, because she already looked like she was ready to go to bed when I got home from work today, we got home at the same time, and she was like, already looked like she was. And you said, I'm home. leaving. I'm going to podcast. Yeah, basically, yeah. I watched <laughs> I watched ESPN for a few minutes, and she had a doubt, but mm-hmm. I felt strong today. That's, that's, I, you I, said that, but I didn't, I didn't understand it. Yeah, I took some steroids today. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You're just all juiced up now. Yeah, I'm jacked up, man. Yeah, all jacked up on Mountain Dew and steroids. Yeah, I, I did get a Mountain Dew today. I got a, yeah. I got a um, what was it? what's those nasty Mountain Dews? Uh, the Code, Code Red. Code Red? Yeah. It was turned in the machine. Yeah. And I wasn't paying attention. I thought it was a cherry something. Mm-hmm. It's code red. Mm-mm. Worst 85 cents of my life. Where'd you get an 85 cent drink at? It was a can, wasn't it? Yeah. Ah, uh, I got you. Melvin's is the only place you can still get 39 four, cent yeah, drinks. Yeah, 42 cents out the door. 42. Yeah. Bag of chips. Yeah, out the door for less than a dollar. Yeah, there you go. But no, man, I got what I, what really, I, I got into a little, little uh, bit of poison ivy on the weekend. Yeah. And last weekend, or last year, or every year it happens, I try to be hard-headed because I'm a tightwad about, I'll spend money on stupid stuff when it comes down to like health. I ain't trying to spend a doctor <laughs> I visit. Try, for, I ain't trying to get my <laughs> blood levels checked or nothing. <laughs> so I, But I do need that football signed by somebody. Yeah, so I, exactly. Hey, my room's looking good now. But anyway, um, <laughs> I, I got it. I was, last year, I, I put the calamine lotion. I did the Benadryl mm-hmm. Zyrtec. And then, like, after, like, three days, it was still, like, going south. Mm-hmm. And that's one place it does not need to be. Never. And so, this year, I tried to try to be um, just really ahead of the game. Mm-hmm. Went to our little, we have a satellite med on site at my work. Mm-hmm. And so, she said, I'm going to give you a steroid shot. I said, good. Mm-hmm. Good. Well, I jacked up. Yeah. I want to go lift some weights when I get done. So, she's she's pouring it out. I was like, hey, is that Decker test? <laughs> <laughs> she said it's cortisone. <laughs> it's I can't I can't remember the name of it. It was not it it wasn't even it wasn't even D ball. Mm. Well, so I don't. You feel really screwed it up though. You got it on your eyes, under your eyes, and everything. Though, yeah, you? you got it. Got it on you. Well, a tree fell on my house. Is what? Not on my house. That's what I'm afraid is <laughs> going to happen next. Yeah. Well, I'm, if you live in the woods, that's what happens. You know, uh, not to say that my dad made the worst decision when he built that house in 1989. I'm just going to go ahead and say though he did he did. Put it in the middle of a bunch of big old trees. Look beautiful when you get up there. You know what? It's real hard to do at your house. What? Get get, get, it, get to it. Get the driveway. <laughs> yeah, get in the driveway. Uh, I never could take my Mustang up it. No, I back. <clears throat> I got about halfway up it one time and had to put it in reverse and coast back off the hill. Yeah. I slid off the road, went through the grass, come back out on the road, parked at the bottom, off to the top. Yep. One Mustang ever has made that driveway. Don Asbury is 0 for 2. You're 0 for whatever. 0 for 4 or 5, time. yeah. Alana Carpenter one time. In that little V6 Mustang. Well, she started going about 80 at the head start. <laughs> and just cut yeah. in. <laughs> Took hard Daddy left. Daddy said, who in the hell dropped you off up there? <laughs> Tell her not to drive up that hill no more. I said, well, she couldn't have made it regardless. Well, you could walk. <laughs> yeah. It is. Like, I did a Facebook video last uh, December when it came to the big, uh, when it came the big snow. And I just said, whose idea was it? Whose grand idea was to live on this mountain? <laughs> 750 acres of farmland on Kennedy, la- Kennedy Lane down there. Yeah. And we pick a mountain. The top of the top of the highest like, mountain. Oh, yeah. Oh, the, yeah. Top of the highest mountain. All, nothing but trees. Yeah. Hey, look, let's, let's, let's take out an acre right there and put a house there. You know what I'd love to have seen more times than I did? I just saw it once, but I'd love to have seen you running off the hill chasing a basketball when you were a kid. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you fall down at the, uh, one side one time? 
Yeah. Or just run all the way to the bottom. That's what's funny about it. No, uh, when we built, it took them four years to build. They just built it sporadically when they had a chance, you know, daddy and his friends. And, um, the one driveway, there's two driveways. A lot of people don't know. There's that one that's really steep. Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, this is pretty steep over here. So imagine that one. So we'd walked up the hill to look at, I was eight years old, seven, eight. We were about to move in. I moved in. We were eight. And, um, or we moved in when I was eight. How about that reword? <laughs> and uh, so I take her off running. And I, I hear my mom said, "Oh, don't, don't, don't run, don't run, don't run." Mm-hmm. By that time, you tripped over my two left feet. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Down the hill you Scratches, go. Scratches, just bruised up. Oh man, I seen a picture uh, that you posted the other day. It was Waylon with a cat, and all I could think of is he had a bottle of four hundred nine right now. That cat being <laughs> trouble. <laughs> oh yeah, Peter would definitely have had fun with me. At, 11, 11 years, years old. old I yeah. hate cats, man. I still aren't real fond of them. But, uh, you remember climbing up the back, that hill on the backside? You know, you, the rock up there. The ro- to the rock up there. What, we yeah. went all the way to the top up there. There's like a yeah. cemetery or something at the top. There's an old Civil War, Civil War cemetery. cemetery up there. Yeah. yeah. That was probably surrounded by copperheads and rattlesnakes. Oh, Nobody it cared probably about was this at stuff. that point in time, too. Either. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Like the other day, I was walking out to the rhino, and daddy's already killed two. Down the bottom of the driveway, so, so I'm like watching my feet the whole time. I'm scared, but you don't think about that stuff. Waylon's always wanting to go up there to that rock. I'm like, no, no, wait till fall. Yeah, wait till winter. Yeah, uh, I, if I drive over a snake in my truck, I pick my feet up. I ain't, I ain't trying to screw around with yeah, no snakes. I hate them. I can I can watch um, I can watch snakes on television and get cold chills and just no. I, if, I have a recurrent dream about being in this square field and there's a snake that's as big as the mm. perimeter of the field that's just crawling around in circles. And the only thing the snake is exactly as long, and he leaves a gap for the gate. So if I was going to get through there, I'd have to run through the run through the gap between his head and his tail. I never could do it. I had that dream for years and years and years. Never could run through there. It's a nightmare. It is all the time. I'm when scared I, to death of snakes. When I was in Cookville, I, I like them. I mowed over one. It was just a, you know. And he says, oh, hell, that's just a chicken snake. That's a guard, that's garter snake. Every one of them's a copperhead. I don't care, yes. Everything's Anaconda a copperhead. to me. Yeah. And, and she gets it on a stick. Wayland's five, uh-uh. Wayland's five at this point, six. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's 2012, probably. It's whatever. He's probably, he's probably four, five. <laughs> Puts it on a what stick. What year was that kid born? I don't know. <laughs> right. But uh, she chases me around the yard. You know how I know your wife's more of a man than we are? Because she picked it up with a picked stick. A, picked that snake up with a stick. She's more of a man. Like, she does... Certain things like, like we were building on my man cave. Yeah, she's like, here, give me, give me that, drill. give me that hammer, give me that drill, drill and that drill. But this is like when you've lived with her long enough, you're like, just let her here, just, her. just give let, it, just let her have her moment. Just give her that drill. And I feel like such a girl. I was just standing there like <laughs> texting. She's like, well, you know what? We could get done a lot quicker if you put that phone down. I was like, why don't you, why don't you hammer something? Why don't you go there and put a screw in? You're gonna take my drill, go there and put a screw in. Because she's, I, I, no one, no, 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 I don't like it there. I was like, what's my stuff? It's my, it's my stuff, and this, this is my getaway. Mm-hmm. You know, for when I get in trouble from you, I'm coming. Here. So, so if if I want it here, I'm going to put it there. What's well, crooked anyway? Here, just tell me, just do it. <laughs> you do it, and it worked out well because she like when she puts she's her, already my, done. Well, when she puts her mind to something, it's done. Yeah, she Game she over. was on it. So hey, I texted her today or I Snapchat her actually, and I said, hey, I just wanted to say thank you for uh, <laughs> for helping me out the last couple nights. I yeah. know you know I really wanted that stuff displayed. And uh, a place for me to hang out, and uh, even though I can't build my building yet, mm-hmm. you know, having a kid will sidetrack you on some stuff that you want to do. And um, yeah, <laughs> breach it. So, uh, so I, was, I, was, I just want to say, you're pretty good most of the time. Pretty good wife most of the time. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, you know, mm-hmm. good talk, slap on the ass. You know, basically, <laughs> you're a good game, and kid. She's like, "What are you sucking up for?" Yeah. I was like, "No, I'm, I'm being serious." And then I was like something i said something else nice then she didn't respond and mm-hmm. i got offended i was like i'm nice five days out of the year and you can't so i thought you can't tell me tell me something nice yeah. back one thing so finally i snapped her back and i said you're welcome she goes for what i said pretend you had good of a job you done and telling you i love you i never told her i loved her anywhere in that process <laughs> but she didn't and she's like well i love you too you're that's sweet i got home and i said she's why'd you snapchat me that i was like because i'm supposed to be this tough guy not tough guy but like i don't show a lot of motion mm-hmm and I was afraid that it happened. I believe that one, not the tough guy. Yeah, it was yeah. completely off base the first time. <laughs> yeah. But it was it was the point. I was like, it's happened so irregularly that I'm just not like lovey dovey. Oh, yeah. I was afraid she screenshotted in a text and put it on social media, and all <laughs> my street cred would be shot. Gone, done. Yeah. So, but she she has helped out a whole whole lot with that. It's looking pretty cool too. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Which room did you put it in? Uh, the old bedroom. Oh, my, my old bedroom. Oh, yeah. We moved way on the other side. Yes. Yeah. 
has had the most wall space, and there's nowhere. I don't. There's no. I still have no. Wall space. It's ridiculous. You got so much. Stuff. If I die tomorrow, somebody's gonna come inside this hoarder. Well, it's not a hoarder. It's some cool stuff. I don't. I don't hoard. It's but it's like she ain't gonna have to work next week if she don't want to. Like it's, <laughs> if she can get what it's worth out of it, yeah. which you can, I'm sure. It's uh-huh. like anything else, All right? But yeah, it's some cool stuff. I'll show you the well, pictures that's cool, of it. So. Um, God, you got me thinking about going in that driveway now. Oh yeah, man. I I purposely put I, Waylon's I, ball I used go. to I used to just uh, where he has to run down the hill. No, I put oh. it, I, <laughs> I put it down at the old White House across from Daddy's old store. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's pretty flat. Mm-hmm. And so he didn't have to bust his face going down the hill. I, well, and I, and I still wouldn't either because I stay I play a lot of ball with him and. <laughs> Look, oh, I, I love I to see that to, now. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Well, I was fat when I was 12, too. So. Oh, I, I ain't never quit. That's just what it is. You know is. who I got to visit a while ago? Oh, Anthony and Linda. That made my night. Oh, yeah. I told, her, I told him that before I left. I said, this has made my night, y'all. And uh, she said, no, it's made my night. And I, I love I love. Oh, Linda's God. a sweetheart. Well, they always say, and for you listeners, uh, we're talking about our buddy Jeremy Hammer, a listener of the show, lifelong friend of ours. It's his... Uh, mom and stepdad that live right up the road from Lucas here. Mm-hmm. You can't have a bad time around those two. Can if you, you get, if you can't have a good time being around sitting and talking to Anthony Price, you you need to get a life. Yeah, I mean, because you suck at it. <laughs> yeah. I I agree. Yeah, just, and Linda, she, <laughs> we, we were. I remember we were. Uh, Jeremy was lowering the truck one time. You know, he used to have those boom, boom, you know, boom. big speakers and trucks just slammed on the ground and. Uh, you know, Jeremy ain't Jeremy's a mechanic now, but he ain't always been that. You know, he no. used, that wasn't that wasn't in him whenever he was uh, in high school. <laughs> he was using an air ratchet, and uh, I remember he, it got locked, and he he held on to it, and he used it as a regular ratchet, and then wouldn't didn't want to tell Anthony he'd done it because he didn't know if it was a good thing to do to that tool or not. <laughs> I just I just remember th- <laughs> now he does it for a living. Yeah, now he does it for a living. I thought that's that's crazy, man. Anthony had a big influence on Jeremy. Uh, yeah, sure did. He, Jer- you know, he Anthony, never would have. Jeremy wouldn't have been a motorcycle mechanic. If that's right. Anthony hadn't have been riding a motorcycle. I don't, I don't, Jer- Jeremy gives me a hard time, man. And I've got to get up there and see him. I hadn't been into his house, actually. His new house? Well, I, I went when he first moved in. Mm-hmm. It's just I haven't been in like five years, which is crazy. Well, that's the time, crazy the time that he's already had a house, that other house that long. Yeah. And, you know, because he always gives me a hard time. He's like, shit. I love it seeing DK on Facebook up here at the shed, and you know, of course where he works. <laughs> yeah. Oh, DK's up here seeing Cody Canada and Shooter Jennings and yada yada yada. Can't see his Can't old buddy. Can't come down the road see old buddy. Yeah, and you know me, mm-hmm. I love him, but I ain't gonna hold back. All right, brother. Well, I know when you come to your mama's, I know which road you pass by. You pass <laughs> Every by time. Jennings Creek Highway where I reside. Every time. So you know, I don't know if you can make it up the driveway. I'll meet you at the bottom. <laughs> I'll come flying so, off this hill face first and see you down so there. So don't give me that crap. But I'm at the shed <laughs> hollering him up musicians when you know yeah i could come see him and i definitely need to now that the kids yeah. are getting bigger and jeremy uh, last year uh Lindsay and and i and brad and becky went to the mountains jeremy drove it was so cool man he drove like an hour to get there mm-hmm. he stayed for 30 minutes i said what kind of idiot does this come on jeremy said, what, are you, what doing? are you doing but it was late when they got up there i was just glad to visit with him for oh a few yeah minutes. i love that guy but so they had ordered t-shirts and uh so i they had the money you know went down and dropped it off yeah so uh but Anthony, went down to drop it off. So Linda said, "What is this we got going on? What do you? It's a show. What are you doing? A, what is a pod? Yeah, a pod, a pod, uh, a tripod, uh, something." <laughs> else. I told her. She said, we, J- "Jeremy had us listening to something about domers one night when we were there visiting." I was like, "Yeah, that one comes around a couple times." Yeah, I was like, "I hear, I hear about that domer story quite a bit." <laughs> and Anthony said, "I'll tell you one thing. If I end up on a, you got, you better not have no daggum secret recorder in your pocket right now." <laughs> and was, oh, he'd be a good one to get on here. Oh man, yeah. He said, he said, won't you quote that, DK? <laughs> you know, the thing laughed. Anthony and Linda said, you need that on the show, don't you, DK? Oh, I'd love to have him on the show, she man. Did. He told me one time about getting into a fight, which I'm going to blow up his spot right here a little bit. He told me one time about getting into a fight, and the guy said something to him at a bar while he's in Florida, and uh, Anthony pretended like he didn't hear it and shook his head, and said, "Do what?" And then leaned a little closer when that guy leaned in. Anthony just cold cocked him. I right guarantee there. it. I'd say he's a little hothead. Oh, I'd have to him. imagine. He said one time he got arrested for shoplifting when he was younger. Yeah. He said, it's only one time. We was talking about yeah. something like that. Yeah. You know? And uh, Jeremy, I don't know exactly where I'm going with that when he hears <laughs> it. And um, Anthony said, hell, one time I had this new car, you know, blah, blah, blah. He said, nice car. He said, I bought a new ZZ Top 8-track. Went in there, right? Yeah. He said, damn thing ate it going down the road. <laughs> and he said, uh, he said, I went back. 
Jack me another one. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he was he was beating the system because they sold him junk. You yeah, know? yeah. Rest of my butt. He said, <laughs> hey, I forget what he said. His aunt or whoever. He said, you know, you could have just took it to customer service and they would have given you a new one. Since <laughs> yeah, probably got it at Walmart anyway, right? <laughs> Uh, so it was a, a store similar to Walmart. Yeah, that's so, pretty funny. Uh, hey, did you see our video that um, the Travis Humphrey sent us this week? I did. His original song? Yeah. Oh, it was so good. I wonder if we can play that. Uh, we, we can play that. Cause yeah, well, surely we can. Travis is, I mean, he's so good. He love it too, man. I talked to Travis this morning. He, like I said, he delivers uh, some stuff. I, is that is that where you talk to him to get him to? Yeah, every uh, Wednesday morning. To play the, uh, cover the, your shooter for you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he came in to work. He comes into work every Wednesday morning. Depends on how, depending on how, how busy I am, I get to kind of shoot, sit there and shoot the bull with him. Yeah. And man, we got on a big, big music kick. Us and we were talking about some old shooter records. And he and I, he said something about the last time you let me down. I was like, play that track. Like, That'd be your next original. I was like, but dude, I said when you got to the like the fifty eight second remaining part, I said I'm coming back home, mm-hmm. I'm coming back to Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And, dude, those vocals were killer. Oh, was, he's such a good singer, man. I just love I just love his vocals. He's got that country twang that you just can't teach, man. Yeah. It's just And I honestly didn't know much about Travis's singing ability because the one time I booked him, I remember he was the one that used to blow me up all the time mm-hmm. at, when I managed Wooly Bullies. Dude, play us, let it, you know, and I didn't yeah. know who I was talking to at the time. All right. I finally booked him and I was out of town. I went to a um some con Eric Church concert. Yeah. And I missed his performance. So I actually never got to see him at Woolies that night. Mm-hmm. Uh so then That kid's good, man. Well, and like I said, it, it was almost to the point, like, I really didn't know what for sure he could do. Then when he came out and just killed it at the, uh, at the, at the, the thing at the park. Mm-hmm. And, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Hey, I, I can't find it right here. I'd play this thing right now. But yeah, I don't know, uh, why it's not showing up on my page because I tagged it. Um, uh, yeah. Accepted the tag. People, 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 hey, man, that's the, that's the thing you got to hit up on Facebook that accept tags. Oh yeah, people be putting some stupid crap on your page that you don't want on there, and uh, I, I make a, the settings where you have to uh, have to accept them. To accept. And you know what I did hey, the other day, right here, brother. You know what I did the other day. Oh, pause that right there. We're gonna we're gonna take a stop for just a second so I can plug this thing in. All right, now we're back. Hey, I'm gonna play this Travis Humphrey right here. This is an original, man. This is awesome. I'm just gonna throw something. Called here. Coming home. Coming home. Coming home. It doesn't seem like long ago when I set out on my own. Ten long years and thousands of miles have been gone for way too long. Don't you worry, Mom. And I'm coming home. Lord knows you tried to tell me, but my mind was made up to leave. Picking it tired of some old bar, it wasn't all I thought it would be. I was wrong And I'm coming home Coming home Back to the hills of Tennessee Coming
coming home back to friends and family. Coming home back to friends and family. Coming. I love that last minute of that song. Just mm. love it. I love it, man. If that's if that's something y'all dig, um, go if, find that. Get on his Facebook and find. You that. can find him at Travis Humphrey on Facebook. He's on mine and Lucas's friend list. Mm -hmm. Check him out, man. He's 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 really in between on whether he wants to pursue this thing. Every time he's kind of down in the dumps, acting like he don't want to play, I give him a little kick in the junk. He got to listen to that every time he decides he don't want to play. He got to play that back. Hey. I tell him, I was, he, he posted something about quitting. I was like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. I was like, you killed it at the park. You killed it every video you post on Facebook. That was nasty. I just loved it. Uh, dude, Whew. Travis, that's awesome. And he's one of the few cats I can kind of kick around with music and talk about. Yeah. You know, you talk to your normal dude, you're not going to know nothing about Cody Jinx and Cody mm -hmm. Canada and Chris Knight. And mm -hmm. me and him could talk. Whitey Morgan and Justin Wells and He's a pretty shooter. good follow, too, man. He had some... He had Pink on there when she was real young singing me and Bobby McGee earlier tonight or earlier today on Facebook. Man, that was just some. I missed that one. That'd, that'd been cool. To oh, see. it's a real good one, man. That you know, Pink's got that rasp in her voice like Janis Joplin did. So I mean, she she really knows how to sing that song, man. It's just it's I, just really good. I love that out of woman. Oh raspy. yeah, that rasp. You know, uh, Pink's always had that, man. I used to love listening to her no matter what she did. She's doing all the acrobatic stuff now, though. I mean, you go to one of her concerts, it's more about her flying around doing acrobatics and it is about her singing so you guys if you wanted to uh want to check out um travis definitely hit him up travis i'm glad i could play that song for you uh i hope you didn't mind i know you've got some i know you <laughs> yeah got, i hope you didn't mind well, we didn't ask <laughs> yeah we didn't ask and uh to, should have tagged us in it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh what the kids say sorry sorry not sorry yeah hashtag sorry not sorry well i'll never try to be that cool ever to do that mm -hmm. but that's what i mean by it oh, i yeah. want to so uh yeah. So hey, uh, another thing we're gonna do. Uh, this this other kid we've that played at the uh, at the park. He's put a thing on Instagram, and we're gonna play it just because hell, we're in a good mood about playing stuff. Uh, and next thing, Lucas, like we're saying, is uh, I want to play a, a a video I just clicked on when I was pulling in your driveway, and I hope no cops are listening. The fact I was Instagramming and he he driving. pulled on it. He clicked on it after he pulled into my driveway. Yeah, that's what I did. That's what he did. Like I got a. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Well, anyway, this is another hey, kid. Yeah. This is another kid that uh, played down here at the Acoustic Down Park named Matt Mayberry. And uh, I mean, he's got a real good voice. Listen to this. Yeah. I, I, I just love this video. It's a, it's Matt's cover of a, a man who was going to die young by Eric Church. Hope y'all, hope y'all dig this. I like fast cars and sharp drinks. Chased a lot of crazy things Left behind my share of broken pieces This morning I turned 36 Just remember half of it Wonder how you outlived Hank or Jesus I put the rage in a rip And roll in the thunder But you kept me from going under Got too heavy I always 
always thought I'd be a heap of metal and a cloud of smoke foot stuck to the pole. So for parts like a junkyard rusty head shit. All right, man, Matt Mayberry. That was uh, that was pretty good stuff. That's pretty good, man. I'd like to see that uh, entire video at some point. In time. Yeah, I mean, of course, with Instagram, yeah, I say it's just with a Instagram, short. You just, what, like well, it's usually like fifteen seconds. I thought, but that was a fifty-eight seconds. But uh, there you go. I've been challenged by the that kid's good. Man, he's so good. I know he had some nerves going on up here at the fundraiser. Yeah, man, but that's he did a fantastic job. You know, that, like we were saying the other day, I think he felt a little better when he had, once he had the guitar. But yeah, exactly. But, but I tell you, when I seen the real star that night afterwards, mm -hmm. and we act, I know you and James killed me because I didn't. I, oh yeah, thanks for inviting us, brother. Look, I didn't know. <laughs> Lindsay was literally told by Jada that her and Derek were going down to my dad's, mm -hmm. and then and we didn't even know all of them were going to be down there. But mm -hmm. ja but Matt Mayberry, James Mayberry, and Blake were down there. Look. You know me. I've never picked up a guitar in my life. I, I don't <laughs> yeah. sing. You you play about as much guitar as I do. Yeah, and it's some. Well, no, you actually own a guitar. Yeah, but I don't play. I it. have a guitar, and it's signed by Chris Stapleton and Shooter Jennings. That's as far <laughs> as I've got with it. You know, and uh, I am so um, just amazed by cats that can sit down and do that. Oh yeah. And James didn't even really. He didn't want to even come out there because Matt was the advertised deal. Yeah. And you know, I could see. You know, I'm sure he had some more courage behind him by that <laughs> eleven by o'clock that point at night. Time, yeah. Matt was killing it. James is killing it. And uh, James will he'll Snapchat me every few days now. When's next picking at Rick's? I mm. said, better ask Rick because Rick wasn't happy I was down there. I don't believe. <laughs> and, <laughs> so I ain't answering nothing for Rick. But so, yeah. what's funny is Jada and Lindsay were talking. They're like, you thought you was the biggest country because you, know, you were singing. They were so awesome because like there's not many people around that you can say, hey, play me whiskey band. And they just go to play. And we'll go in. We're like a Hank concert. We'll, we'll do 40 seconds. I said, play me Chris, Chris Knight, baby. Because mm -hmm. I get. Because I'll just call him baby. I was comfortable with him at that point. <laughs> I felt like you call everybody honey. Yeah. You and Curtis Hatcher. Hunter, yeah. You and Curtis Hatcher only two men I know call everybody honey. And, uh, <laughs> That's a Bon L staple right there. But. <laughs> <laughs> and so they were just, man, it's all over the place. James, James Mayberry's like, you know, we need to hang again. I said, well, you got to understand, you've heard these stories from Blake Allen and all these cats. Yeah. Uh, there ain't a whole lot of DK left anymore. Yeah, you the gotta, the DK from you know, 2005, 6, 7. And they hear these stories and they're thinking. Let's do that. Yeah. These boys back too young now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, and I'm not saying I. You back me in the corner every now and then. I might show out might, one time for you on accident. Yeah. Uh, but for the most part, I don't even want to talk trash to him. Yeah, hit them thirties and then he'll send me a Snapchat at seven fifteen on Saturday morning. Gonna play volleyball with a blue cam between his leg. And I said that ain't even right, man. <laughs> nope. I, ain't, I ain't even had. I ain't even had sugar smacks yet. <laughs> He's already turning on. Yeah, I'll tell you about. Uh, I'll tell you about my guitar experience. One of the last times I ever played my guitar, sitting on the back deck of four ninety seven West Third Street, apartment six. Picking the guitar, and the girl next door said, uh, why don't you play a little louder? I said, I was just sitting around messing around. She said, yeah, my mama says that uh, you don't play any louder because you can't play. I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> I said, go in there and ask your mama to come out here and play this guitar. <laughs> it's like last time I talked to that girl or, <laughs> or played the guitar. <laughs> we'll tell your mama to get, to get her uh, phone number off the Cotton Eye Joe's bathroom. We'll talk yeah, about it. Yeah. Uh, go back in the house, honey. You wasn't invited to this party anyway. Was it some of the softball players? No, this is just somebody moved in. Brand remember Brandon Palmer and? Uh, mm. uh, Luke Ash and that bunch. They just lived in number five. Uh, part of that Brandon bunch. and what's the one that looked like the bulldog, the bull faced gremlin <laughs> Stott Brandon. Steiner? Brandon, <laughs> that's that's Brandon. That's Rick Steiner. He looked yeah. like Rick Steiner. Then there was Luke. He looked like that. He looked like that 125 pound I would say redneck it, that just. He got sprayed down with water one time. It was 106 pounds soaking wet the whole time. He looked like he had a big case of. The little man syndrome just we'll try no, to help you too. He didn't have that so much, but uh, he had some at Lebanon Redneck in him. Okay, definitely. Yeah. I can oh, definitely yeah. say that. Stevie Wonder can say that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, That's about the third Stevie Wonder reference I've heard today. I don't really? know why he's so relevant today. Uh, I don't know. I didn't see it coming for sure. Yeah, it just came out of nowhere. Neither did he. <laughs> Hello. I about sent James a meme with Stevie Wonder earlier, but I went for the woman that was the old granny. Yeah, I just have to show it to you. It's irrelevant. <laughs> right. But uh, the other guy that you lived next to, he was real laid back and unmotivated. Would, would be a <laughs> he lived with me for a long time, Jason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was my he was my right hand man for a long time. I uh, good dude, man. Oh, super good dude. I love that guy. Talk about the hardest person in the world to get a hold of. 
I, I ca- would imagine. I called that cat for two years after after me and him moved out. I called him for two years, and he finally answered. I said, I've been calling you for two years. He said, let's, let's not get dramatic. I said, <laughs> no, Jason, seriously. I moved out literally two years ago, and you <laughs> yeah. haven't answered the telephone yet. <laughs> and, said, oh, well, yeah. You know how I see that scenario going down? What? Him laying in the recliner, rolling his own cigarettes like he used to do. Yeah. Looking at the cordless phone and be like, oh. Oh, I can call him back. <laughs> well, I guarantee you wasn't laying down. It was, he was probably sitting there staring at the telephone going, I'm not talking to that big-headed idiot. I lived with him for five years. I'm not talking yeah. to him right now. He was my fa- I mean, I like Oh, I love Jason. Well, Brandon was pretty cool, too. He, yeah. he was pretty cool. Yeah, uh, Brandon got me my first job after out of, out of college, you know. First job. First job out of college. So what was – what was uh, was that your first job ever? No, 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 no. Well, I guess technically it was, but that – not that time. I worked down there twice. I went as a, I went as a uh, engineering. Uh, I don't even know what they call them now. You know where you're just a school kid and they bring you on for the summer or whatever. Oh, intern. Intern. Yeah, I come on as an engineering intern for down there in 2008 or nine. He got me a job down there as a freshman in college. Man, he just just because he was a manager and he was my neighbor and he said, "Yeah, you want to get some experience?" So yeah, let's let's do that. But then. My first job that wasn't just like that, I went and worked at a four wheeler shop. Believe it or not, I oh, worked yeah. at a mo- motorcycles four wheeler. Do you know what you're talking about when you were working there? No, not when I started. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't? Knew, I, well, I knew about my four wheelers. Oh, I could because that was complete sarcasm when I yeah, said. What? <laughs> well, I mean, I could I could worry out about four wheelers at that point in time, but I didn't know anything about oh. motorcycles, boats, jet skis. That's changed. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> oh yeah, that's uh, that kind of fell into my wheelhouse after that. So you don't count like your. Uh, you know I. You don't count farming. I don't count farming. I mean, you had I, to do that. I set tobacco and I've bared lumber off of a right. off bared lumber off of a sawmill, and you know I've done well, everything on a farm. One of my first actual jobs that Curtis would let me do. Curtis, if it had a cab track, if the <laughs> if it takes a cab tractor to do it, I didn't get to do it. But yeah. <laughs> if you can do it without a cab, Curtis, let me do it. <laughs> well, there you go. And in his defense, and Pa's defense too. I shouldn't have been driving the big tractors because really the one time I got to wreck hay with it, I set it on fire on the side of the road down here and burn it to the ground. I'm glad you acknowledged that. I did. I really, <laughs> did. I really did. I'll tell you what happened. I, I was coming out of the field and uh, it was smoking. I mean, smoking like hell. And Pa, pa flagged me down. I said, that tractor's on fire, son. Me and him sat there for about 45 minutes and pulled hay off of the back axle and we thought it was done. And I got driving down the road. And I uh, made it all the way through Hermie Springs on fire. I mean, I was on fire coming through Hermie Springs. Didn't know it. Didn't know a thing about it. I got in front of Melvin's house down here on 52. Somebody passes me on the road, whips around in the road, comes flying back, woman hanging out of the truck, flagging me down, saying, hey, hey, hey. I thought, look at this crazy broad. <laughs> what does she want? And I'm in a cab of a tractor. I thought, How, what? I don't know what she wants me to do. And she finally got my attention. I, I gave her a what a, one of those shruggy shoulders things. And she pointed behind me. I looked around. There's about a 12 foot flame licking out of the back of this tractor. Oh. I said, I got you. I got you. I got you. And I whipped it over. Good eye. Good, Good eye. eye. <laughs> I whipped it over the side of the road, jump out, run around behind it. And all I could hear was my grandpa saying, If that tractor catches on fire, don't let my rake burn to the ground because it's a pretty new rake. And I, so I run back there and unhooked the rake and shoved it about a foot. You know, I didn't get hardly anywhere. Yeah. A guy gets, uh, there's a guy in a box truck, like one of those Schwann's trucks or something. So he comes, he kind of like steps out of the truck, comes sainering up through there, got a fire extinguisher in his hand. I see he's got a fire extinguisher, so I take off running, just running as hard as I can back there, snatch this fire extinguisher out of his hand. I hear him saying something just faintly in the background as I'm running as hard as I can back towards his tractor with what I thought to be the saving grace of the tractor. Yeah. Turns out what he was saying was I've already used that fire extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> I get up there, I run up there and pull the pin, squeeze the trigger, went. Poof, that's all it had. And I, uh, I, I, I walked back to him and I handed it, I handed it to him. He said, "I was trying to tell you that didn't have anything <laughs> in." I, thought, I said, "Why'd you even get it out of the truck?" He said, "I don't know. It was yeah, on fire." <laughs> yeah, people will freak out. When yeah, stuff like people that. freaks out when stuff's on fire. I worked, I worked up here in your chicken barns with yeah, you. Yeah, time or two, yeah, time or two with the uh, old. With everybody, Adam Boone. Oh, oh, Bandi- Bandito. oh, Bandito. I forgot about that cat. He said, I like the way the girl butt moves, man. <laughs> Remember? That guy was so funny, man. He was so funny. I like, I, I'm not going to repeat what he said. Oh, yeah. For don't, sure. You can't uh, repeat what Bandit said. No, but he was obsessed with a uh, an I older certain- lady in Herman Springs <laughs> who worked at the Dairy Burgers time. Yeah. I like the way her butt jiggle. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm not going to name any names, but she's blonde headed. No, she's blonde headed <laughs> and got two kids. Yep, that's all we're going to say. That's all I can say about that. <laughs> um, so I worked around here. My first actual job, man, um, was at the car wash when I went to tech. Oh, yeah, Remember yeah, that? yeah. Up there on uh, Jefferson? Yeah, I wasn't going to say the name because I'm about to tell a wild story that's pretty funny. <laughs> not, not wild. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not saying the initials of yeah. the. Uh, not saying the name. Yeah. Initials are ultra pro. <laughs> um, no, man, there was, a, when I, there was two different kind of eras that I worked there in. Uh, and not really eras, but like Brianna, my cousin, had um, her ex-boyfriend and some of his friends, uh, mm-hmm. Ben, well, ben, ben and, yeah. and, uh, and uh, Matt Pillow, and I think Carl. Carl worked there. That, oh, yeah. That... Uh, so it was a that didn't real, seem like some place a car would have worked. Not from Franklin, Tennessee. You don't work at a car wash to get through college. Right. He used to make fun of this place all the time. I love Carl. But he would definitely oh, make make uh, fun of Clay County every time he come. I think it rubbed off, too. <laughs> and uh, so. Uh, <laughs> make a train take a dirt road. <laughs> I ain't no telling how many that, times no, I heard No, that was that. JD. Oh, whoa, whoa. who are you talking about? Carl. The one that married Kayla. Oh, Kayla's old. Oh, 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 yeah. I yeah. forgot about that guy now. Yeah. Now, JD. Yeah, hey, Carl. I forgot about Carl. Is man. there ever a, a different, more different cat sober versus drinking than JD? Not that the I've ever met The most reserved, well-mannered dude ever sober. sober. <laughs> drinking? Yeah. Hey, man. Slap you right in the mouth. Hastings would slap you in the mouth. Cold oh, cock yeah. you in the chin, so hit me. I said, I don't want to hit you. Oh, JD do it driving down the road. Yeah. I took him home several times, and he... Hit me. Hit me. No. I, I, JD, I'm driving, bud. I don't remember him doing as much as I, Hastings. Or was. Hastings, I mean. Yeah, Hastings, Hastings was a job, by Yeah, me. Hastings, I'm driving, man. But that was fun. And he hit me in the face while no, I was no, driving. No, he would knock the hell out of you. Oh, he was right in the mouth. No, I just hit you. You hit me. Yeah, I don't want to hit turn. you, psycho. Stop it. Stop it. I loved it, dude. Though. Oh, yeah, he's and a great guy. So getting back to it, that was a fun little, but I was a young dude and all them mm. just trying to trying to go to work you know whatever make my six dollar tip yeah. i was gonna make my seven dollars an hour whatever it was yeah people but, hide money under the floor mats trying to see if you're gonna steal it from yeah man we had a lot of that crap uh one dude got his weed stolen in there <laughs> which one's dumber did you leave your weed in the vehicle or you come back complaining that your weed got stolen you know mm. what i'm saying what are you gonna do tell the cops yeah come on, man. say who you're gonna call come on yeah but uh, shouldn't have left it in there the funnest like the funnest memories i got was after i think i quit for a little while and they hired me back um, I'm gonna say I quit. Mm. I don't think I've ever got fired from a job. Um, I come back because you can do whatever. There's cats there that was working there in 03 that are still working there. I'm like, oh, Ooh. I mean, they're not managers either. That's not a career decision. I didn't think. No, I wouldn't think so. But hey, man, at least they're working. Happens. Yeah. Hey, at least they're not leeching off us. You know That's what I'm right. saying? That's right. So, um, anyway, so I worked with a younger bunch from Salina. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. I worked with two or three kids from Salina. One of them I love him to death for sure, and I ain't gonna mention his name, but. We had a little game we played, basically. And, uh, okay, the the car goes to the automatic washer. You come out, there's a crew that dries it off. Mm-hmm. Then you pull it up, and then you, you know, whatever it's, whatever the package is. Mm-hmm. Say if it gets Armor All tires, uh, Armor All the inside, air freshener, whatever. Right. You do it up front by Jefferson. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, there was, a, um, there was two air fresheners, uh, like baby powder, and I cannot lemon lime. That were the two that was just terrible. And we played a little game in between. Like we we get to playing a game. We're like we're down there at the dryer, wait for cars to come out. You know, dude turns around, spraying with some baby powder. <laughs> hey, what the? Heck? You smell yeah. baby powder? I ain't smell nothing. Yeah. You know. So we got to a little thing going where we'd give each other tip money, or we call dibs, or mm-hmm. if say if a lady was just being a complete. You know mm-hmm. what? Or mm-hmm. The guy was being a douche when he come in, like complaining about his vehicle the whole way step. Or if we knew him from returning customers, mm-hmm. you're it. <laughs> okay? And it's awful to say, uh-huh. but it's awesome at the same time. We would go up there, and the challenge was, as they're, like you had to get them distracted long enough to look inside the vehicle, then hit them on some lemon lime or some baby powder. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And this one lady, man, we come up. She had dog hair all in her vehicle, dude. Oh. They vacuumed the cats back here in the back, vacuum, vacuum, vacuum. Come can't out. Can't get it out. Can, you can't get that no, out. No, you can't get and that out. And she goes, uh, "I hope you did a better job of getting this out." I was like, "Well, I mean, I didn't vacuum. I've been up here, but I'm sure these guys done a great job. Great job. I, I drew short stick this day. Yeah, which is I'll take it all day because yeah, it's pretty fun. Right, honestly. And so I was like, "Well, ma'am, honestly, uh, 
if you want to get a better look at the car, I mean, see if it, see if it, uh, <laughs> if it what you think about it. Yeah. I'm looking at the dudes and they're like, oh, get her, get her. Yeah. Baby powder, ching, ching, <laughs> Clint Eastwood of South Jefferson. I said, uh, and she's looking at the driver's <laughs> side and I said, nah, I mean, yeah, check that passenger floorboard Lady out. Lady and I looked at Because there was a lot in the passenger floorboard. She, boom, ching, 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 ching. <laughs> Baby Pounder Bandit. <laughs> Just lit her up. Take it, old lady. <laughs> Take that, old woman. No <laughs> mad compl- woman. Oh, it, man, to be 20 years old again, oh, do yeah. stupid stuff like that. But yeah, we had a great time there. It was my first actual job. Once you get tired, once you got past the point of everybody playing at a car wash, oh. you know, all mm. the time. I had to oh, hear that God. all the time. Mm. So. My, first, my first job as a uh, that motorcycle mechanic, man, I, one of my really good friends now, I don't know if he's listening to the show, he's commented on it a few times, but no, hopefully I'll listen to this one, it's Joe Ray, man, was probably my first, probably my first mentor, but we wound up being friends later on, you know, he kind of taught me a lot of the ins and outs about a lot of stuff that I thought I knew and a lot of stuff I really didn't, you know, about yeah. mechanic and stuff. Never forget this guy, man, we was, I was probably 19 year old, bugging him to death, just wearing him out and they're asking him questions about something that I didn't know, you know. Walked over to him, and I said, Joe, uh, can you take a look at this? And he goes, <sighs> snatched the carburetor out of my hand, started looking at it, you know. I said, am I, am I bothering you? He said, well, no more than normal, Lucas. And then <laughs> just went, <laughs> went back to show me. I'll never forget that. Man, have been friends ever since, man. Oh, well. Yeah, a great guy. You know how to take people sometimes, oh, yeah. I guess. Yeah, that guy's funny, man. <laughs> a guy named Bud Street come in there. He used to come in all the time, Bud is a bud is an old school motorcycle racer and he i don't know what he uh, I, I know what he does i'm not gonna blow up his spot or anything but um he came in one time i always i called everybody bud for a long time just hey bud yeah he come in and i said hey bud and he said hey looked at joe he said who the hell is that <laughs> <laughs> and uh and uh i was two or three times after i after i got to talking to him i said you know uh i went up to him i said i didn't realize that they called you bud I said, I just call everybody, bud. I said, what's your real name? He said, it's none of your damn business what my name is. I said, all right. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to go back to work then, bud. He said, yeah, get back over and get back to working on that four-wheeler, son. I said, okay. Do you get aggravated by the reason that that's what kind of a pet peeve of mine? Like, I get bothered by some words like that. Uh, when we were in college, like all the- Oh, I used to have one that wore you out, too. I don't know. What? Well, you uh, I said I I I, just, I don't remember what it was. It was it may have been Bud at that point in time. Uh, it may have been because I remember uh, you said. Uh, I said I don't know why I call everybody Bud. He said you, you, your comment was that it was because you're fake like all them other guys that say it all the time. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't Bud. It was Buddy. Yeah, there, well, that was what it was. Buddy. Oh yeah. man, and that's when we were all in college, and like you'd get around like the and like I said, no offense, to, being for, and all that bunch. Yeah. yeah, and it's you know I was in that fraternity for a year, and mm-hmm. it was give or take. It wasn't my thing. Right. You know, I, Shout out to all those guys. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I, did I come away with a lot of friends from that thing? No, because I was immature. My heart wasn't in it. Right. I had, I had friends. Right. I wasn't like a lot of these guys that came from two, three, eight, four hours. Right. I had real friends. And not, not, Within 30 minutes. And I'm not meaning that towards them. Right. I'm just saying, you know, Brad, AJ, mm-hmm. you know, I already had Elliot and James Van Eric there. You came up the next year. Mm-hmm. We met Cucumber. Cucumber is, you know... uh Driving somewhere, listening to this right now. As, <laughs> as, when it comes back through, you're yeah. driving somewhere. Um, love you, buddy. You're going to eventually break down and get down here now that you're a Tennessee resident. Hey, I, I see all them posts. You're in Tennessee now. I, you, yeah. Yeah. We, R- hey, rocking that One Lane Road podcast shirt. I've seen that. I like that. We're going to get back to that. I'm going to make a note yeah. of that because we're going to shout some people out later. Yeah. But um, anyway, uh, Cucumber is really the only one that I've made a lifelong friend out of. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And that's not to say that I don't see – Ryan Yuckin at the Titans games. Mm-hmm. I don't see uh, Victor Torres and some of these guys. John Cameron is doing a thing at uh, Tech or at uh, Vols game. Vols when they play Tech. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm not comfortable being around some of those guys because, honestly, I didn't like a lot of them. Right. It's just, call it, when, Co- I'm not going to sugarcoat now. Right. You know, uh, there weren't my kind of people. And my dad always said, that's the dumbest thing you've ever done in your life. He said, I always thought you've made some bad decisions here and there. But, you know, joining a fraternity. And I was like, I know. I get it. I, I get it. You know, would I do it again? It's a pretty bold statement. <laughs> Covers a lot of ground <laughs> right there ground. to pinpoint one thing. Yeah. But no, I mean, like, would I do it again? Uh, to the point I knew I was making a mistake then because the night we got initiated, I didn't even go to the party. 
because I was so <laughs> over it. Yeah. yeah, I was so over it. Might it it, it wasn't my it. thing. You know, and they, they have these private things, and I'm not going to actually pull that. You know, you have to do certain things when you're pledging. Yeah. And I was just like, dude, who are you? Yeah, who are you, you know, telling me to do that? Yeah. You know, no. And, yeah. I, and I wasn't trying to think I was bigger than that. It just wasn't something. I'm like, I can't tell people no. Mm-hmm. And Ben and Carl and all those guys were really on me about joining. Yeah. I joined. It wasn't my thing, you know? Mm-hmm. And like I said, do, there's, is there about 10 or 15 guys that if I see right now, I'm going to love seeing? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Adam Choate, J.D., Hastings, Choate, right? Ben. Yeah, I mean, like I said, Choate, would, would we be friends if he's still living cool? Absolutely. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I didn't mean to say that, that yeah. Cucumber's the only friend I made, but we yeah. kept up. Right. Choate, right. Ben, who's just went off in the middle of nowhere. I don't even know how we got off on this, but now well, yeah. well, but I, you know, Ben's in over in Oodawa. Yeah, and Carl's in Franklin. J, uh, you know, JD's in Nashville. Josh Cameron. You know, all these guys. I mean, you know, uh, there's several that I would love mm-hmm. to have a beer with and yeah. kick back, talk about some old times. Yeah, you know. Uh, but I mean, it's just what it is what it is. Yeah. When you have you know your own friends you grew up with, yeah, kind of gravitate towards them, and mm-hmm. just just how you know it's just how it is. But. That was uh, how initially I got to the thing. And if y'all hadn't noticed, 46 minutes into this, this is kind of me and Lucas going a little bit original <laughs> yeah, on y'all. Yeah, just, a little bit of old school. Yeah, the little little bit of stories here. We just and this, this is, is what, what it is tonight. <laughs> well, and this is generally what people want to hear, man. Especially right. people from our home base here. Mm-hmm. People text me still and say, "Crack you up," and I was like, you know, I feel like, and I don't. And you and I took a ride just a second ago, mm-hmm. and you know, it's something that I. I feel like, I don't know if it's a burnout process where we're, it's. I don't know. It kind of turned into a job for a little bit, right? It did. Yeah. And I feel like we put so much work into that at the park. Then after that, it was kind of like. Yeah, that <laughs> park thing kind of, it, it was a lot of, lot more work. Yeah, it was just a lot, man. A lot of worry, a lot of work. Yeah, and then after that, it's just kind of like, you know, I love having the guests on. And Lucas yeah. has got some guests on and whatnot. But when it comes down to it, man, this is why we started. That's right. And I told Lucas tonight, I said. Let's just strip this thing down tonight, and let's do the original, Lucas. I mean, I, I, I couldn't be any happier that you said that, because <laughs> yeah. we're both looking for the, about the same thing mm-hmm. tonight out of this deal. Yeah. So, uh, and, you know, when we talk about it, I heard a weird, and this couldn't be more random. This is definitely the night to throw this on. <laughs> yeah. I heard something on the radio on 94.7 on the Billy Mac show today. Yeah. That women, that men smell better to women when they eat salads. Men smell better to women. Comes out your pores, I guess, dude. Salad comes out your pores? I don't know. How else would you it. smell better? I don't know. I mean, I figure Abercrombie and Fierce can fix anything because I turn half gay when I smell that on a man for three seconds. You wear it all the time, don't you? I love the hell out of it. It's the only <laughs> thing in Abercrombie I can wear. Yeah. <laughs> Fat ass ain't fitting nothing else in there. So, how, I don't even understand how salads make you smell better. You know what I don't see is a lot of women flocking to uh, little skinny salad eating guys. No. You know, uh, Brock Lesnar, I bet I bet he don't put a lot of salad in. So what do you Conor think? McGregor what don't. do you think they grab it towards? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and say that that testosterone pouring out of his pores <laughs> yeah. that he's shooting into his butt every night. I'm gonna, <laughs> go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and say they're gravitating towards those uh, pheromones a little bit more than they are that salad smell. I think so. Yeah. You know, it goes back to that old meme, that old story. Whatever, whatever good st- uh, story ever happened with uh, I was eating a salad. Never. I know? never started. Well, I was drinking a beer once. Yeah, and- I was. I was uh, halfway through a Caesar one time, man, and you, you'll you never believe what yeah. happened. It, it's just funny the way Billy Mack was like, yeah, because it, it, women just think men smell better when they eat salads. And he's like, so men, put down the carbs, put down the pizza. Mm. And you know what's so ironic about that? What? Literally, before we left, mm-hmm. Lindsay had cooked a pizza <laughs> and cooked and made a salad, Caesar salad. Yeah. And I come in, I was like, God, because I hadn't ate anything. I let them uh-huh. eat first, and I was just watching something on ESPN. And I was like, Man, that salad's looking nice. Mm-hmm. And she said, go ahead and get you some. There's plenty left. And I went, yeah, okay. I probably will. And I walked to the stove and got the two last pieces of pizza. I killed that pizza. I'm smelling rough tonight, <laughs> I feel. I feel like I, feel, I smell rough tonight. You know, uh, bring up radio. I don't even know what channel I was listening to the other day or something, man. I heard the most awkward interaction on the radio the other day by two DJs. Yeah. yeah I believe it was 106.9. I don't listen to the regular radio much. And this guy literally... I, this guy literally said the most innocuous thing I've ever heard in my life along the lines of, you should see, you know, this kid's thing. The other guy started Actual laughing. Thing? Penis? <laughs> no, no. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you should see the something this kid said or whatever. Didn't say what it was. Didn't say how funny it was. Didn't say anything about it. The other guy laughed 
Like he just heard the funniest joke in the world. Like he just got done watching Liar Liar in 1996. I mean, just like he was falling over on the floor laughing. He said, what was it? After he got done laughing. It was the dumbest thing oh, I'd ever heard man. in my life. No no chemistry between these two cats or nothing, man. Does that, when you when you hear that, and not trying to put ourselves over, but knowing the chemistry we have, we're like, why are we not on the right? You know what? That, that time right there, I don't generally do that. I don't generally go, oh, I'm better than that guy. I don't generally do that. But I, all I could think was, well, I could do that. Yeah, I could. I could do that. If yeah. if somebody's gonna write my script and point, this is when you laugh right here. Yeah. I could do that all day. So th- that might have been Gator and the Stick Man. They got a pretty good stick going for years. If it was one hundred six nine in the morning. Yeah, I don't know what. If it's, and I tell you what, I hope it who it was not was uh, Big Damn Bubba. I don't know. I'd be damned if I ever call them out again. I told that story on here. I ain't <laughs> never calling. <laughs> I'm never atting them. Yeah, like I won't be that guy going subliminal on them when i'll be like you know mentioning <laughs> how bad they <laughs> yeah. yeah man i ain't ever putting at in front of their name again they yeah. called me straight out straight out on the radio you know what pissed me off this morning driving to work what? um i got to the intersection of willow and jackson and, I, and it just it, it was red mm-hmm. yeah it was red mm-hmm. okay it was 5 45 sorry my brain's not working completely at 5 45 this huh? cadillac uh no is it i can't remember if it was an escalator or a navigator it was somebody from the nfl behind me and <laughs> <laughs> and dude, they hit, they they blew their horn, and that that drives me nuts. Anyway. Oh, I can't stand that. I mean, even if it's not me, like mm-hmm. like the other day, uh, this woman was jamming. I was out in the Tutco truck, and I was at the same red light. Mm-hmm. Uh, ironic enough, and this, I mean, she had no worries in the world. It was like she had her blinds on or something. Like she had blinds or tinted windows. Nobody was seeing. She was dancing. Her daughter was like <laughs> vibing with it. They was all just. And I was like, Are you, is this woman for real? Huh. And then the guy, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't green for. I mean, six and a half seconds. Oh my! Not even a two seconds. Mm. Dude behind in her Prius. Said, beep, beep. Oh god! Shut yeah. up. High and mighty in his Prius. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god! And the woman was like, ooh, ooh. she made the, <laughs> the face she made. Oh she my was god! Just, she was in the middle of a Justin Timberlake song, no doubt. Oh yeah. And uh, so this dude this morning, beep. Look at me. I don't have enough time to even look in the rear view, and he's beeping at me again. <laughs> <laughs> straight Jackson County Clay County Redneck come out. I rode down yeah. the window and I was like, couldn't even get my window down because I was in the turn because, I mean, I, obviously I win. He, yeah. Job accomplished. <laughs> but I was, I was going the right lane. He was coming in the le- left lane and I was like, window not even halfway down hardly and it was like, just motioning him like I was flagging traffic at the fair, you <laughs> yeah. know. Come on then if yeah, you're in such a big hurry. such a hurry, go on. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what, I had this, not that thing, I was, I was, Sitting over to the side to, uh, this week on Thursday, man. I was at Carthage at the Walmart, sitting at that big stoplight. There's a guy in a blue F-150 comes up, comes up behind me and like, I mean, just whips his truck over into the left lane. I mean, I was sitting in the right lane. He whipped it in front of this other car right here, and then we blow. He just blows through the red light or the light as soon as it turned green. We get up through there and I thought, man, this guy's in too big of a hurry for it to be five o'clock on a Saturday, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then. Uh, I was looking in my rearview mirror, and here comes a little blue Lexus off the hill there behind it. I bet he was doing 90 mile an hour. And he comes up through there, and that car that was, that car with that blue truck had whipped in front of, still hadn't had time to really catch me. And blew in between there. If he missed my rear bumper by a foot, I'd have been surprised. And he come up flying on that blue F-150, and I don't know if they was having something before that or what it was, but next thing you know, windows are rolled down, the birds are, people <laughs> flipping birds are yelling out, trying to get each other to pull over. It, yeah. it lasts all the way up until in front of the, uh, hospital and they're still up there and one of them's all the way down to past mcdonald's and he's still trying to get the other guy to f- come over there another guy done turned off back at the red light go to the gym that guy was at the gym <laughs> <laughs> i thought huh, well, that cat uh he's gonna have a good workout today he's got some testosterone yeah. raging right now no fear t-shirt on oh yeah ain't just, scared across the yeah american fighter t-shirt he's uh, been yeah I, you know what, man? Smith County's a different kind of world. You said it happened in Smith County? Oh, yeah. Dude, is that not the weirdest Walmart you've ever been in your life? I, I, I can't talk too much about it. I visit that thing pretty much, pretty regularly. Yeah, because you work there. Well, people know me down there, too. Well, guess what? <laughs> I don't care, and I don't work in Smith County. Right. I go through there. That is the weirdest. It's like the hills have eyes put a Walmart <laughs> in the middle of their joint. <laughs> I ain't never seen nothing, man. Yeah. I mean, camouflage is the is king oh, down yeah. there. And nothing oh, against camouflage. I wear camouflage. But I'm saying. You, you walk into that thing, you're going to find some Smith County Gordonsville t-shirts. That's for sure. They sell yeah. them things right and left in there. And be damned if I walk in that place with some nice jeans and a button-up shirt, buttoned down with the sleeves rolled up. Uh-huh. Look, I got, uh, they, I'm like styling a profile like Nature Boy Ric Flair up in there in an American <laughs> Eagle $30 
button up. Because dude's got his got his uh cut off t shirt made that way. Mm-hmm. But, Didn't do that. Oh God. <laughs> I mean, it's just I ain't. Yeah. I mean, hey man, I'm country. Yeah. Never lo- never forget my roots down here. We're actually in Ember Springs recording, as you know. Uh-huh. I love it. But now you can take it to another level. Oh, another level. S- Smith County Walmart. They got they deserve another wing in the world of redneck Walmarts. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm keeping kind of quiet here. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Luke is actually yeah. I, I, tr- ask me to keep my mouth shut about Smith County Walmart. I can't do it. I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> I ain't trying. Um, did you uh something else? Did did I see a picture of you with Charlie Daniels this week? Yeah, man. Uh, you know what I do right now? You know what I kind of do? Just go just, go everywhere. Well, that but um. One thing about it is you like stalk people. Yeah, that because that's what I do, <laughs> and, and that's what people say. I know, I know. I hear it all the time. You don't know how many times a week I hear, "What does Dustin do?" Yeah, just because you're posting stuff on Facebook all the time or Twitter yeah. or whatever, somebody's following you on. I hear all the time, "What does Dustin even do?" There's a little bit of method to my madness. Yeah, um, you know, and that's what like Clint Frey's like. Who are you stalking this weekend? And it kind of pissed me off a little. while. not just Clint because I can take Clint. Right. You know, like. Couple of, Andrew Meadows is notorious for it. You know, we'll go do a math problem. You know, <laughs> I don't know. I love you, Andrew. Just kidding. But uh, like he always gave me yeah, a hard time. Yeah, for sure. Come help me with my homework. Yeah, I would, yeah, <laughs> definitely. And uh, but it, uh, you know, it, it's a thing that like I'm like, dude, I'm not hanging out at airports. You know, I'm not at baggage claim. But like, oh, just ran into Stephen. <laughs> Randomly, there. He yeah, is. man. I mean, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to hotels. Like, it's a crazy thing called social media. You guys should try it. Yeah. And what happens when you don't just want to sit in? Clay County and watch, watch Bigfoot all day on the Speed Network. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, you you branch out and you go places. And sorry that I like to meet people sometimes because I think it's kind of cool to meet people you grew up idolizing. Right. Right. So what I do is I I, I joined this little thing in 2011 called Twitter. Mm-hmm. And people is that where they put the tw- the the twits? People put stuff. Hey, I will be appearing at. Said location from two to four. Come meet me. Come see. I don't know. I don't know that that's stalking when the person tells you to come see him. All right. Uh. So yeah. So kind of now, uh, like used to when I started meeting people, it was kind of a big deal. You know, I mean, mm. I only really the you know like when I met Shaq, obviously I was gonna blast it out there. Some people I do it just to troll people that say, <laughs> "Why does Dustin Kennedy meet everybody?" All right. So it actually, is a little bit like when people's like. You know, you go meet so and so. Yeah. Well, guess what? Just met someone else. Post. Here it is. So gossip about that behind my back, Chief. <laughs> yeah. Talk about me now. I mean, I don't think it's a big. I mean, really, like the Titans is where it started at. And I've met, you know, I've met uh, all every Titan I've ever wanted to meet, basically, except for Steve McNair. Mm-hmm. And then Shaq was a big deal. I grew up on professional wrestling. I met a lot of those guys that come to conventions and shows local. Mm-hmm. I mean, I do go a lot, and you know, hey. I, I assure you, Lucas, it's bothering everybody else a heck of a lot more than it's bothering me when they're saying, you know, <laughs> yeah. whatever. But it is cool because I've made connections that way. Well, yeah, we've certain... got some pretty neat guests on here because of that. I mean, it's, it is. And I'm not just tooting my own horn or nothing, but it's just you go down and act normal and, you know, you don't, you don't, you're not one of those people that's hanging out stalking, per se. And some cool, some cool things have happened about it. So this week, a random kind of, it wasn't random, but... It, it was. It was random because didn't your wife just want to take something back and then all of a sudden Charlie Daniels was there? Yeah. It, basically, that's how it happened. Like, we were, that's the day the, the tree fell through the shed on Sunday morning. We were redoing that room. Just kind of a crappy day, you know, really. Right. Lindsay's been saying all day, I really need to take some stuff back to Target. So I'm not going all the way to Nashville to take anything back to Target. I really didn't want to. But but by the time I saw this, I was fed up. And somebody texted me, was like, hey, Charlie Daniels is doing a uh, meet and greet at Gander Mountain from 2 to 4. And I, Love Gander Mountain anyway. Yeah. And I like to shout Charlie Daniel. Mm-hmm. Did you go to Mount Juliet, not yeah, Nashville? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, Mount Juliet. Yeah. 9X is different, though, 10, whatever. <laughs> so you might as well. Say. Yeah. But I mean, you know, so I was like, hey, honey, would kind of just, just kind, of, kind of over this day now. Do you want to take that dress back? Let's take stuff? that dress back to Target. And uh, she was like, hey, yeah. yeah. If you don't care, honey, drop me off at Gander Mountain. You're <laughs> going over to Target, too. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, it was, uh, you know, I, I did go and. Charlie's one of those guys where, like, you know, at one time, three, four, or five years ago, I was – four years ago, I was five feet from George Jones and didn't get to – You didn't get a picture with the possum? And you know how many people I've got pictures with I care less I got pictures with probably? I was going to say, as hard as you've worked to get pictures with people that 
I've never seen. Yeah. And it, it you was, was that close to George Jones and didn't get a picture? It was like before. That's like, that's like you telling you being that close to Shooter Jennings not asking him to come on the show. <laughs> and Charlie Daniels. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I, but I don't think Charlie's. I don't think as, Charlie would have been as good of a guest as. Yeah. I, I don't know. He could have been. I mean, I bet you know, he's got some great stories. Yeah. He actually told me a funny story on the way down there. Or when we got there, I was like, and it was from two to four, and we didn't get there like a quarter to four. And I was like, man, I'm so glad you didn't leave because, you know, we drove from Gainesboro basically to come see you, which I did left out the shopping part too. Yeah. until the end. I just want yeah. to make it sound good. And he goes, hell, I've been to Gainesboro. Mm -hmm. I said, you have, because he lives in Mount Julia. And I said, he said, yeah, years ago, son, years ago, I was playing in a golf tournament in East Tennessee. He said, we got to want a little whiskey. Mm -hmm. He said, you couldn't get no whiskey around there. And he said, where's the closest place you can get? And they said, Gainesboro, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. He said, we drove an hour and a half to get whiskey. <laughs> and I said, well. Come all the way down there to the liquor store beside the yeah. thing dinner. Yeah. So he goes, what brings y'all out? Is there anything else? I said, yeah, my wife been wanting to, she'd been pumping me up about coming there and bring some stuff to Target. And I said, that's her, like, you know, that's her store. And mm -hmm. I said, this is one of my stores. So. Uh, I said, so I'm glad to see you. And we, we talked to her for a minute and, uh, just a cool dude, man. Just real laid back. Uh, oh, I bet. I mean, yeah. he ain't got nothing to prove to nobody. He's just, well, he's done his thing already. Yeah. And like I said, uh, what we, was he even doing? Just a meet and greet? He has a new CD and, um, all donations pretty much was going to some sort of fundraiser. And you didn't have to do anything to go up there and talk to him. And I bought a CD just to, yeah. I hadn't listened to a second of it. I just bought it just to give to the, right. you know, cause. Get you. And, uh, Get a signature on it, I'm sure. Uh, I did, yeah, of course. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, but I mean, I wasn't. That wasn't the plan. I right. just, um, but yeah, he he was he was really cool. And uh, but like I said, when when I was five feet from George Jones and didn't get a picture, it was like it was before smartphones, really, before I had one. So it was kind of like, dang. You know, I had a chance to meet Merle Haggard before, didn't do it. So Charlie Daniels, I, you know, probably in his seventies, I would imagine, his seventies. Oh, yeah. So I wasn't going to be like, you know, dude, he's right here. Mm -hmm. Let's just go talk to the guy for 10 minutes. All right. So it turned into a, a pretty good trip. But uh, awesome. the, the one I'm really working on this weekend, the one, and I'm not going to meet anybody. Yeah, uh, but you're going to see uh, uh, Stapleton and Hank Jr. I'll say I, uh, Hank Williams Jr. And of course, if anybody don't know me, Hank. If you don't walk up and show him, just pull your sleeve up. I don't have up. anymore, man. Oh, you had it I covered up. I got it covered up, up. yeah. It's not really? We can talk about a lot of embarrassing stuff in my life. Let's don't talk about the Ruger <laughs> tattoo from 2003 on a bad whim. Uh -huh. Dude, the... worst tattoo ever. <laughs> but uh, what'd you get it covered up with? Oh, uh, uh, it, it, what it's is, a sun, dude. I would say ain't it a sun or a griffin. Because obviously, like you know, that means so much to me in my life. What? But what happens when you're 19 and get a stupid Ruger tattoo that's full of black ink that won't stick, and it takes up. <laughs> <laughs> 33.2 percent of your arm yeah uh you gotta fix something gotta to cover up that black cover spot that, cover that so up so embarrassing <laughs> it's not, hey i can live i can live my life knowing that i got two of the dumbest tattoos ever i got the ruger then i put dustin on my right shoulder blade because in damon, case you ever forgot damon started had that sweet damon and because damon started was such a positive role model in yeah. my life growing mm -hmm. up i love damon Stoudemire. So what happened you hang out with kids getting tattoos and, always I was always afraid I'd forget my name. I always thought about having it tattooed on me. Yeah, but that's a pretty sweet cover-up I got on this side now. This is a pretty cool-looking one right here. That's all right. That didn't turn out bad. Yeah, it looks good. But you know what would be cool if I had muscles? Yeah, you know what? Look. You gotta put that on your lower back. It looks like it'd fit real nicely on your lower back. <laughs> right, well, uh, but I'm saying, like, they're bad tattoos, but I never got a tramp stamp. That's true. Right? That's right. And I, I don't think you did. I, I hadn't looked lately. But. No, I don't have a tramp stamp. Pretty sure it up. Brandon Gregory does. Oh, hello. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> got thrown under the bus. <laughs> Jeremy Amber does. <laughs> Do it once. You know what, you know what it is? Uh -uh. Hammer and Gregory. <laughs> so what's even worse, putting your first name on your shoulders, putting your last name on your back? Everybody else knows now. <laughs> yeah. Well, they... Sorry, guys. Yeah. We can uh, cut that out if y'all want us to, but uh, everybody's going to hear it first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, but no, dude, I'm I'm pretty pumped, man. Like, uh, Hank's my favorite all time artist, and uh, everybody gets to the point like, oh man, Hank gets too drunk to sing. Well, no, that's not true. He's been singing for sixty years. These songs for forty, mm -hmm. probably anywhere from you know five to forty. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get tired of singing the same stuff. <laughs> yeah. He ad libs a lot. He'll play forty seconds of this, a minute of this. My favorite part of seeing Hank Jr. is that he just sits out on a stool now. He just tells stories, man, because he's got so many. My favorite part. I may have mentioned this earlier shows. They all run together. 
He says, when he's singing all my rowdy friends, I sit down and go, well, all my rowdy friends, hell, they're dead and gone anyway. <laughs> and yeah. he'll play a Waylon song, then he'll play a Cash song. I'd imagine he do a Merle now that he's gone. Uh-huh. He plays uh, his daddy's music. And uh, it's a little bit of a drive. It's where I saw Dirks at, and I've been studying Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. seen Indy was selling their, t- uh, their tickets cheaper. Um, the grass was like one price. It was reasonable, decent, I guess, for mm-hmm. grass seeds. Then, like, the pit was, like, 50 more bucks or something. I'm like, who wouldn't? I mean, yeah. 50 more bucks, are you not going to be by If the you're already going to Indy anyway. Yeah. And Stapleton is that rare dude that, you know, has set the world on fire, and I hadn't caught him live yet. And mm-hmm. He's playing Nashville two nights in October. He's playing with Leanne Womack. No disrespect to Leanne Womack, but you're not rocking Randall Bull Steve as Hank Jr. I'll say that ain't, that ain't the same. Yeah. Taking a uh, friend of the show, old James Hatcher, with you. Yeah. Or- well, yeah. Uh, Lindsay was going to go, but she couldn't get off work. It's the first week with kids. Yeah. And w- me and uh, Jada planned it with her boyfriend, Derek, uh-huh. and we kind of did it without Lindsay ask uh, and Lindsay, because <laughs> we've been playing Cincinnati for Saturday. And um, so me and James were kind of just talking about it the other day. We, we met up the other day and we were discussing it, and he'd been really talking about wanting to see Stapleton. Mm-hmm. That's. Let's go to, to go. Do it. So I asked him for Ice Lindsay. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm looking forward. I can't wait to give a review of it. Um, I bet Stapleton's awesome. I mean, well, I got 85 videos. Remember it from Guns N' Roses. There, everybody thought they really just kicked me under the <laughs> kicked me in the in the groin there uh-huh. when I was down and I couldn't see him. So, uh, um, you know, uh, there's a couple things going on this week that I'd like kind of promote a little bit. Um, uh, one thing I want to touch on really briefly. We touched in the past episode. Uh, the Sports One deal I told you about several weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, for anybody listening, this show will be up later tonight, early in the morning. Um, Sports One in Cookville on Broad Street, across from Crawdaddy's, is doing a really cool event this Saturday from 2 to 7, uh, promoting the Tennessee Tech versus University of Tennessee Volunteers football game in November. They're going to have formal fo- former Vols players, uh, Vols for Life, Al Wilson and Jamal Lewis. Jamal is one of the few 2,000-yard rushers in NFL history. They're going to be there. I think the tech gig, the band, everybody's going to be there from 2 to 4. A little after that is when the Vols players will come in. Um, don't know if I'll make it, but I encourage anybody that's a real sports fan, especially tech or Vols. I mean, hey, anybody from tech and alumni, hey, go out there and show your support. Uh, and throw on some purple and gold. And get that's out there. right. That's right. That, two, that first two hours is going to be eat up with tech and throw your purple and gold on. And Vols, you know, we've got a lot of Vols fans around this area. So mm-hmm. definitely go see Jamal Lewis and Al Wilson. And, uh, hey, get out there, that, Nikki. That's Check a, it out. That's a cool event, man. And another thing, uh, they were missing out an awesome opportunity just because I'm going to this concert. Oh, uh, Chris Rains. Yeah. Try to pull us out there. Yeah, he texted me last night and asked me if if we're not doing anything, he would, he would love for us to open his show. And it's his first time uh, opening up Club Lava mm-hmm. in Cookville. And, you know, we know these guys are going to kill it. But they're going to just murder that's that just, place it goes without saying uh, we hadn't put chris and brad over enough yeah on this show is if we haven't then i just feel like crap man keep I, coming i feel like crap that i can't go out there because i already had this prior commitment yeah because he's done obviously like we've said so much for the show logo banner fundraiser dude's awesome brother's awesome damn saxophone player still just killing Killed it in it. my brain that he did down there and showing out uh Love the whole damn crew. I hate it. I can't repay the favor tomorrow night. Sorry. I mean, I've, I've texted him like, I was like crazy ex-girlfriend. Texting four texts to his one. Just right. saying, like, you know, yeah, I really wanted I'm to so go. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'd love to be there. But yeah, he's opening up. You guys should go check him out. Uh, we've, uh, look like I said, Club Lava, his first opening act there. Uh, he's played all over Cookville. Everybody knows how good he is. What I want to do is, and I hadn't asked Chris, and I really hope it's cool, uh, kind of go along with Everybody else we've dropped tonight that we hadn't given permission to, but Chris you guys has got, just had to get over. It. Chris has got a really, really good um, ori- got, original he, song. He's got a good original song here. He's got he's really got a really good uh, album here. So if you guys get on iTunes and uh, search the the Summer Storm Brother Rains, um, this is uh, this is a CD that he put out there. It's got four originals on it: One Bullet, California, Someday Rose, Cold Winter's Day. But we're gonna go ahead and play. Uh, Play one of these here. The uh, someday rose. Someday rose. It's this a, is one Chris always plays. It's one of his, you know, one of the things. One he's definitely proudest of. He plays at all of his shows. A lot of his shows. If you if you, uh, if you requested, I'm sure Chris would be love love to play it. And we just want to give y'all. We want to give Chris and Brad and the boys a little little shout out right here on the show. I'm 
the brother reigns or brother reigns I'll, I'll keep saying the i don't know why i can't stop doing that but that was someday rose by the brother reigns. I'm sure brad would love to correct you on that oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think he did I, down at the park the other night yeah. i love those guys man go check that out on uh, on uh, itunes definitely yeah, worth pick the, that worth the buy pick that up so uh well man do you want to you want to talk about your your boy for a few Ooh, minutes conor mcgregor Come in there and beat Diaz. Now he didn't. He didn't. No, he didn't come was, in and mark the kid. It was now, actually, he wore them legs out. It, it wound up being a split decision fight. You know, uh, McGregor come out and uh, got the first and third and the fourth round, and then I think they gave the other two rounds to uh, Diaz. I think that's the way the uh, the the judges wound up doing it. But the uh, I mean, come in and chopped them legs out from under Diaz is what he did. He just kept kicking them and kicking them, and kicking them. I think I, I I've heard he he wound up breaking his foot. He kicked him so many times and these you get a. If you ain't used to doing that and you get checked a couple times, it break that foot. But he uh, come out there and beat him, man. He give him respect afterwards. He he, he, he all the talk that was leading up the water balls bottles ba- being thrown. Yeah, all that crap being thrown. Cussing languages I can understand. Yeah, you know that's that's something Conor McGregor's always done. He's just always done that. He's, well, he's a, a showman. Yeah, he's a showman. But every time he gets done fighting somebody, goes over there, shakes their hand, you know, gives them a hug, uh, and it's done. You well, know, all that. He's he's he doesn't he doesn't win 
and then go talk trash about him. You know, he doesn't. He's not one of those guys like Chuck Liddell that just uh, used to run yeah. around the ring and scream at him and stuff. He's just well, that's, always been like that's that. pretty honorable because he he, he he you know he's doing giving the respect. Yeah, that obviously Diaz you know deserved and earned. But like, but I love it, man. I love the showmanship. That oh, he, you I love know, some good trash talking. Well, I mean, who you know? That's the thing about NBA players now. Everybody's so cookie cutter, clean. Mm-hmm. Like, like the the first time that LeBron or anybody steps out of their comfort box or our comfort box now in the the PR world we live in, mm-hmm. and a PC world, not PR PC world we live Kinda in. The same now though. Yeah, and it's just like they get so criticized for saying. Anything. Do you think you're better than him? Are you a better player than, you know, Steph Curry? The the answer to give now is, well, I mean, you know, he's a hell of a player. You know, yeah. I, you know I do my thing. You know, every now and then it's like, hey, man, look, I'm the one with, I, I'm the one with three championships. Right. He needs to step up to my game. It's nice to hear, you know, and I even got caught up by some guys at work because, like, when, when Curry – I know we got off subject, but if Curry, like the time he got blocked by LeBron and LeBron stared him down, mm-hmm. I was like, how cocky. And I, and I thought that the guys were like, you're the one – Complains all the time because everybody's so buddy buddy now. Come play on my team. I'm like, you know what? I'm a hypocrite. Yeah. Because you know what? I changed my mind right here on the spot. I love that he stared him down. Now I think about it. Yeah, oh yeah. But so I love the fact that McGregor's out there. You know what he's doing? He's selling. He's selling every time it comes out of his mouth. It's sixty four ninety nine coming out of his mouth every time. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and did you sell the people that come out? The, all those people, Kanye West, Rihanna, all them people, they didn't yeah. come out to watch UFC. They don't care about that. No. They come out to watch Conor McGregor. That's right. Conor McGregor's out there rubbing elbows with J-Lo or, and uh, yep. all them other people. They, All those people don't care about watching somebody get beat. They could have come watch it for years. It's all they about come out there. They come out there to watch Conor McGregor. All about marketing. You're exactly right. And, they, and he, But the, they're, they're probably not going to give him that Diaz – uh, McGregor three right now because Diaz was smoking. Uh, he was well, vape, he was vaping that weed up. Yeah, he. You know what? They, I, I don't understand that guy, but <laughs> <coughs> I mean, he every opportunity in the world he can't he can't just wait until after the drug test, man. Just, yeah, Jesus Christ, yeah, is it that hard? Give it a minute. Give and it you're a, talking to a guy who's not even a big believer that weed should be a big deal. Right? Am I? A, you know, do I smoke weed? No. But uh, am I a believer that it's Probably the root of lesser evils. Yeah, in the world of sports. Yeah, and not yeah. only that, I'm sure. I'm sure if that's what he's into, right after he just got his legs chopped out from under <laughs> him and just got done with the fight, that's probably what he wanted to do. I'm just saying, give it a day. Give it, yeah, give it 15, or 15 minutes at least. Give it, give it a minute. You know, and then. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the uh, he's they're probably not going to go right back to that fight. Uh, Connor still holds that 45 belt, that 145 belt. He's got to do something with it. Yeah. Dana White was on uh, UFC Unfiltered the other day saying he's going to – something's got to happen there. So he's either going to have to vacate that belt or he's going to have to go down and he's going to have to fight uh, Jose Aldo. He's going to have to fight somebody. Now, Dana White also said that he's not too interested in that Jose Aldo and uh, Connor McGregor fight, it's, which I don't, I don't blame him. It, the yeah. last one lasted 13 seconds. I don't want to watch <laughs> another 13-second fight, you know. Yeah. So I, if I'd love to see him vacate that 145 belt and go to 155, and I, man, there's some monsters waiting for him at 155, just waiting to waiting to uh, kick on him. Well, there's always somebody. There's always a spoke in the wheel. Always stepping up. You so. heard you heard who wants to fight him and who it was almost almost had the deal done. Hmm. Floyd Mayweather. Hmm. Uh, so Floyd Mayweather and him all but had the deal worked out, and all they couldn't figure out was yeah. who's getting more money out of it. And it's going to be a monster. they be wiping their butt with $100 bills for All day life. long. Oh, man. And uh, there's nobody else that can cross over like that. And, oh, you know, no, no. Nobody else is going to do that. But oh, I'd love to see that. You know, I don't he know has so much crossover, Bill. He wrestled in Orlando for WrestleMania 24 against the Big Show. In Floyd Mayweather did? Yeah, 2008. And against the Big Show? Yeah, it's pretty stupid. Big, Floyd Mayweather's big shows that guy. Pounds? Big Show's that guy that, like, anytime there's a celebrity comes in, Big Show does the job for him. Like, he laid down for, like, a sumo wrestler three years three years before that. Mm-hmm. I think he's out there in his, what do they call it, the little things they wear. Oh, the yeah, the diaper, uh, basically. Yeah, the diaper bag. And then, you know, he, he jobs to Mayweather. They've already announced it for WrestleMania 33, so I ain't even sure why I ain't bought my tickets yet in Orlando again, actually. Mm-hmm. Him and Shaq's going one-on-one finally after teasing it for seven years. <laughs> Big Diesel's coming on the scene. <laughs> the big show and Big he, Diesel. Yeah, he was on uh, WrestleMania this year as did, a surprise did they, guest. Did they let Floyd Mayweather beat the big show? Yeah, man. Stupid. That's stupid. 
But he hey, outweighs him by three people. He's got that knockout punch, son. Yeah. You can't knock out the big show if you, you're 140 if you're, pounds. You have to jump off the top rope to do it. Yeah. You heard about you know, Brock Lesnar. You know, he's he's already called out Conor McGregor. He said he takes bigger dumps, basically, than, <laughs> than Conor, McGregor. Conor McGregor. If you want some, get, <laughs> paraphrasing that, basically. Yeah. He said, if you want some, come get it, buddy. Yeah. Tough guy. Yeah, Conor McGregor is still uh, uh, talking crap about those WWE guys. You know, CM Punk's coming up here pretty soon, too. Oh, is he? Yeah. Uh, for sure. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, he's on the card. Yeah. Oh, and uh, some other UFC news. Dana White said, oh, we've got a real big New York card. No, there's never been a fight in New York yet, you know, and it's finally yeah, coming up. Yeah. He's putting the card together, and he said he was working on it this week, so by the end of the week, he may know what the 202 card is. Ronda Rousey is not going to fight in that yeah, New I, York card. Yeah, I saw the headline. He said I, all I seen was Rousey will not fight in MSG. Yeah, yeah. So what, the, What's up with that? Well, this is not her time. It's not – you know, I don't know that she's going to come back. I still hope that she does, and I hope that she goes – I hope that she gets – out of the fight game i don't know what else she has to prove you know yeah. you know i'm sure she wants to come back in and you know fight holly again but she's just well, she's just moved beyond that to me i hope you know yeah and she's like we've said in earlier episodes last time we covered ufc a couple episodes ago uh she is she is the brock lesnar of the females yeah even though she goes gets beat she can go to other platforms she could go to wwe who she's a humongous fan of and they mm-hmm. love her just equally mm-hmm. hey she's the brock where I, you know yeah you're, you're not gonna see her every week on monday night raw right but you'll see her you know say i don't know uh if she's doing a run you see her five times over two months span or something you might, yeah. you might see her 20 times a year right yeah, she's not gonna be on that 300 day no year. she doesn't need to be for her appeal yeah or you go do movies like she did she has such a no hey guess what nobody remembers that last loss really no it's, like, I it's mean, gone Everybody remembers her fighting Betch Cohea, and everybody remembers her, you know, doing that eleven-second craziness with Misha Tate, and all. It just, uh, yeah, you, you know, it, she's a special attraction. She yeah, she's a super special way. attraction, you know. And I don't, I just don't want to see Holly Holm kick her in the face again. I don't want to see it, and I, and, I, and that's where I was leading with that. Also, yeah. was like, you know, you can lose and be forgotten. Like it took us that long to be forgotten. Mm-hmm. Remember your dominance. Mm-hmm. Go, that's right. go play fight. Uh huh. Don't get kicked in the face again. Yeah, that's right. Speaking of play fighting, mm-hmm. Brock had a little run in this Monday on. Uh, <laughs> I have to cover the wrestling. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I feel like a lot of these guys that probably listen to us early and wanted like Dusty Smith always want to hear wrestling. We've brought some wrestling stuff up, and I yeah. don't think he Dusty's following as much as he was uh-huh. initially. But uh, Chris Jericho, who a lot of people don't give enough credit to, he's the one that Bill Goldberg talked some trash to back in the WCW days, and, and Chris choked him out on the floor. You know what <laughs> yeah. I'm saying? So after this, long story short on this WWE rundown, SummerSlam, who is universally known as the second biggest card WWE puts on every year, um, they stopped the match. Brock busted open Randy Orton, and it was a legit cut on the top of the head, bleeding profusely from the head. Mm. Well, Brock, this is where it gets confusing. They don't know whether Brock went off off script or not. And he kept beating him in the head, and they stopped the match. Hey, uh, I tell you what, he went off on went off on one of them steroid <laughs> rants. Is what he did. He, he seen blood and went crazy, man. He got all that UFC blood in him now, man. He yeah, can't take man. it. So, uh, so Jericho confronts him the next night on Monday after Raw or during Raw, whatever. He called him out for being unprofessional. Brock mm-hmm. told him to mind his own business. In other words, mm-hmm. then they they have a shoving match back and forth, and Brock uh, says hit me or kiss me <laughs> then he holds his hands behind his back and says hit me or kiss me mm. you know whatever mm-hmm. and vince and triple h have to have to uh step in and step hold. in and then they admit that yeah it was a work and that it was supposed to happen that way yeah so nobody believes that though do they i don't know i don't i don't know i haven't watched it yet i just saw some highlights i, I got busy sunday and i didn't get to watch it i got the network but uh what what is what are any of them going to do with Brock Lesnar? Well, I don't know. Like I said, yeah, Chris Jericho took Goldberg down, who's a huge dude. Yeah, but he don't have the background that Lesnar has on. Yeah, I would say you, he might have took uh, Goldberg down and choked him out. And Goldberg was a D one wrestler, if I remember that correctly. I, I I don't know. He played for the Falcons in the NFL. I don't. Know yeah, I thought a, I think he was a wrestler too. I, I might be wrong about that. Either way, I tell you what, he hadn't been doing. He didn't go fight Mark Hunt in UFC. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He can kick his ass. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't fight Frank, uh, Frank Muir. I about said Mike Freer. I did, I really did yeah. about say that. He didn't fight Frank Muir. Well, it was 
It, it'd been nice to see. We'll never get to see that footage or anything. Yeah. But it, I kind of like. I tell you what, seventy-year-old Vince McMahon better settle down. He yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not be running around in there with Triple H and Brock Lesnar, yeah. Chris Jericho. Well, he's as juiced as the rest of them. Well, yeah, that's true. For a sixty-nine-year-old man to be Them on bones still fitness, brittle. <laughs> come on. Oh yeah, no doubt about that. Yeah. So, uh, well, man, uh, I, I don't want to talk on it just a second, but if we've got, talked about UFC. I've got to talk about Titans football for like five minutes. Yeah. The reason being, two two se- two preseason games in. And third preseason game coming up this weekend. This Saturday, yeah. yeah. Hey, I had free tickets all over the board Saturday, and I just didn't want to go. Like, yeah. It was, it was, I had so much to do. It was preseason. They, yeah. And who did they play? Carolina Panthers. Oh, well. you, know what, you know what pisses me off about it? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to soapbox here for a second. Yeah. Is that like I follow some groups on Facebook, and I'm friends with here and there. And like, yeah, I get it. Like the Tennessee Titans expectations are – they're, you know, realistically, I, I, I can see a six-win season. Mm-hmm. Think about this. I know it's a completely revamped roster. We've got Derek Henry, and we've got DeMarco Murray. Marcus is back another year. You know, we've got this kid out of uh, UMass, a fifth-round draft pick, wide receiver Tajay Sharp, who just got a DGB booted out of town. We'll talk about that in a second. Mm-hmm. I get it. The expectations are high, but, like, everybody's complaining that the Panthers come in and beat them, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, it's a preseason game. Marcus played two series Nobody plays preseason, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and th- do they look great? No, our, de- our secondary looked terrible. But um, it's a preseason game. You're still, until 16 games happen this year, you're still a, a three-win team from last year mm-hmm. playing against a team that played in the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Can you chill out with the, with the skeptics? Not only that, I mean, in preseason, in preseason, they're still trying to play those other guys and to just trying to figure out where they fit in, right? Right, man. You know, I'm I'm reading. I I, I follow uh, like some groups on Facebook, and it's just so like if everybody on that side's not cousins, I'll be shocked. <laughs> it's so ignorant, dude. I'm not trying to talk bad about anybody, but I am mm-hmm. because it's like I read this stuff. I'm like, are these people serious? Like, dude, we're a three win team playing our starters for two series. Mm-hmm. Then okay, our third string lost to their third string. A three win team lose to a Super Bowl team with a third. Shut up! Yeah, <laughs> just just chill out with you know, all this. And the nobody's nobody's expected the Titans to come in and try to win a Super Bowl this year, anyway. Well, you think, right? But these people are just so overbearing on these groups, and it's like watching a car wreck, man. Like I wanted to, like I told Lindsay, I was like, I need to delete this group. It's ignorant. It's like <laughs> then I'll see something I'm like that's pretty entertaining, right? They're so <laughs> stupid. It's yeah, it's like I can't leave. It's like a car like wreck. Watching Teen Mom watching. all the time. Right? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, so. Uh, but hey, you know DGB got traded, and I I really hate that because anytime you see a guy that you're gonna have to you're gonna have to give me what those initials mean. Yeah, I'm sorry, Dor- yeah. Doriel Green Beckham. Uh, long story short, on him coming out of high school, top ten receiver or top ten big board player coming out of college. Mm-hmm. Um, went to Missouri, kind of showed out, had some great highlights. You know, put him on tape, showing out, mm-hmm. got a lot of legal trouble mm-hmm. here or there, and they um. They dropped him from the team. He went to Oklahoma. Didn't play during the draft. They said he's top 10 talent, no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. Six foot five, 235 pounds. Mm. Just beast. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, he falls all the way to 40 at the Titans. The Titans had like mm. 32 or 33. They traded back and still got the guy they wanted. That was the old regime, though. As you know, mm-hmm. you know Ken Wisenhunt, the coach at the time, Rustin Webster, the GM, they both got traded. <clears throat> now with Mike Malarkey and John Robinson, you know, you can't get away with things if it's your guy they draft. You know that's mm-hmm. not their guy. Right. It was it was other guys. So if you come into camp a little out of shape, like people reported, mm-hmm. did you be? All, he was always a super nice guy when you meet him. You know, a little backwards, a little bit, but dude, pretty good guy. Right. You know, when you've seen the potential. Um, but the the heat on him was he was running some wrong routes. Ooh. Maybe he didn't wrap wrap his head around the playbook enough. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people said he wasn't ready for the playbook. A little advanced for him. You know, what, he did, what he did, get a little big head, thinking he was better than what he was, or what happened? I, you know, I don't know if that's necessarily, or it's just something he can't control. Like, some people... Yeah, well, like, that's right. Some people know, just can't... Can't grasp right. the... And I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm right. just saying what I read on Bleacher Report every day. I'm not right. an expert. I'm not at St. Pomp... You know, I, I know everybody thinks I'm there all the time, but I'm... <laughs> right. you, know, uh, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm not going to say that's what happened, but that's what I read, right. is that that's what happened. And it's a shame that, I mean, something's got to be going on there that... Like I said, a kid out of UMass, fifth round pick, come in and t- took his snaps, and then you got a guy from Miami coming in, took his snaps. They signed thirty five year old, thirty five year old Andre Johnson, one of the greatest players in history, wide receiver. Mm-hmm. 
But at 35, you probably shouldn't be coming in and taking a 23-year-old spot. Right. Uh, I hate to see him go because last year he kind of showed potential. Of all the wide receiver uh, rookie, God dang, I can't even talk. Wide receiver rookies last year, he was only behind Amari Cooper, who came from Alabama. Mm-hmm. At the end of the year, he showed some plays. Mario to give him a pass, broke a couple of tackles, took it for a big gain touchdown. Mm-hmm. So you've seen the potential, 6'5". That's the same thing with Justin Hunter, 6'4", 210 pounds, best athlete on the team probably. Mm-hmm. And he can't get his head wrapped around crap. He's probably going to be cut. Soon. Well, I mean – what are they trying to do anything special this year? Is this the same old same old playbook? They just can't get it. Or, I mean, what's going on? Why? Well, they changed a little bit, I'd imagine, with Malarkey last year. But he's putting in a lot of the same stuff. They got a different offensive coordinator over Terry Rubisky over the summer. Uh, I don't know, but hey, John Robinson basically saying, I don't care if you're a second round pick last year or who you know. If you trade your second round pick from last year, yeah, it kind of puts everybody on notice to hey, shape up or get out, get out. Mm-hmm. I love it. If you if you can't hold hey. up your end of the bargain. See yeah. you later. Man, I'll tell you what, if that puts together a good team, then yeah. I'll tell you one thing. I'd sure love to have a – I no more than I watch sports. I know this is kind of irrelevant, but I'd, it'd be great to have a Super Bowl winning team here yeah. sometime soon. Yeah. I still feel like we won that Super Bowl just because we made it because all the mediocrities followed. And that's one thing us as Titan fans do. We attach to players that – we get – I'm not going to say – some players that we really just grow accustomed to seeing every day at practice when we go and caravans – just because a guy's nice. Mm-hmm. I've done it myself. I've, oh, yeah. I've you get attached my... to somebody and you, you want to see them do good. You yeah. give them a lot of slack. You know, yeah. they may not be may not be on point like they should be, but, hey, he's a nice guy. Dude, you know, I've done, I've done it for Jake Locker for three years. Everybody yeah. coming out of college, dude, he's terrible. He yeah. is terrible. Yeah, but he's a nice guy. Yeah, man. And he, and he shows flashes every now and then, just mm-hmm. like DGB. You know, but, hey. It's here, uh, football, I smell it, balls kick off in eight, nine days, something like that. Mm-hmm. Dude, it's here, and I can't wait to. Win. No, they're playing, oh, yeah, I guess you mean season opener, but uh, yeah. they're playing Tuesday or Wednesday, aren't they? They're playing on a Thursday against Appalachian Thursday. State to start the season. Mm-hmm. Then they play um, Virginia Tech at Bristol, mm-hmm. Dude, and that's going to be, Kenny Chesney's doing the, uh, the concert the night before. You heading up for it? Oh, hell no. Unless you're paying for it. No, I ain't going. <laughs> That's big money right yeah. there. It's, oh, it, you're talking you're talking 200 bucks for nosebleeds. Ooh. And you can imagine at a racetrack. Yeah. How high? Dude, it's going to be nuts. It's on YouTube. You can get on YouTube right now and see the, the how they're making the feel like as soon as they did Br- Bristol a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. They started it, transforming it. It's so cool to see. Yeah. Like I said, Kenny's going to be there the night before. That'll be a good time. There's a big gap in between the uh, – well, I mean, obviously the racetrack. I mean, what did they do today? I have no I, – I, it's not complete. I have to watch. Yeah. Basically, uh, to put me on the spot with that question, yeah. I lied. I hadn't watched the videos yet. But uh, a, guy from work, <laughs> gotcha. get, uh, a guy from work gave me a five-minute rundown of it today, and he's yeah. a UT freak. And uh, so I am going to watch the videos, and I can't wait to watch the game. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just an exciting time to be a, a Tennessee football fan in general in the state from, from Knoxville to Nashville because they're doing a lot of man, good things. Man, it's about time, too. I mean, oh, God. years ago we used to talk about, you know, Tennessee football and it actually be going somewhere with it, you know. Yeah. And it's, oh, it's been so long. I yeah. Mean, well, I mean, you know, everybody wants to put the heat on um, Lane Kiffin when yeah. he comes down the screw job here. Uh-huh. They blame Derek Dooley. Yeah, Lane Kiffin at least had his competitive in a few games. Derek Dooley was the biggest idiot. Tennessee, yeah, I know. Yeah, Derek uh, Kiffin left us. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's a douche for leaving, like mm-hmm. he did. That was his dream job. I'm not holding it against him. Mm-hmm. I'm like one of the few t- people. I mean, he's, yeah, he, he is a ass mm-hmm. when you meet him. But I mean, I can't blame the guy for leaving to go to to USC. It's his dream job. Oh yeah. I mean, you name your kid Knox before you do it, jerk. But I mean, <laughs> I mean, Derek Dooley just was lost his whole time here, and it, he really set the back of the franchise. You know when some team um, – I can't remember what uh, – what was it? Somebody, Some school had a basketball player drafted in the NFL draft, and the Vols didn't have one single player. <laughs> but that's coming around. Like, we'll have probably five players at least in the draft the next year. Well, that's awesome. And like I said, with the Titans, I was at the playoff, last playoff game in 2008 – uh, would love to tell you the story of downtown afterwards. There's no <laughs> way I can tell that. No way I can tell that story on myself. And not even on myself, the other two that went with me more so than, 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 than me. you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's one of the greatest stories ever, too, but uh-huh. I can't tell it. And um, it's been a long time since those teams have been relevant. And I feel it. I feel it coming along. So. Well, that's good, man. So, hey, hope that, that guy's right there. That was, the, that was the best of UFC and NFL in like 15 minutes. That's pretty good. Laid it out there. Because everybody keeps telling us, 
I, I keep, do you hear that a lot? They can't yeah. keep up with our – Yeah, stuff. I would say it's a lot of the sports and stuff, you know, people – you know, and I, I'm I'm not a great big sports fan anyway, so I'm you know I, I get what they're saying. Sometimes you know it gets a little long for me if we get too deep into it. But they, you know, it it's not everybody's cup of tea. But I mean, there's some people who love it. You know, some yeah. people love talking about the sports. It, I, and, I'm, and I'm kind of neglect. You know, I'm kind of split on that because I feel like a lot of our fans want to listen to it, mm-hmm. and then a lot of people listen don't. So I feel like if we just touch it, yeah, t- just touch I it. I think that was good. Just give it, just give it a little. Let me uh, a little nudge. Let me tell you what I saw this week. I took, or I guess it was last weekend. Karen and I went to uh, eat down to Old Bull and Thistle. Yeah, buddy. I found a OLR podcast T-shirt walking through the That's crowd. That's it right there, man. Bam! I thought, hey, I wanted to, I wanted to stop him and say, hey, I listened too. Yeah. And see what he said about us, <laughs> but I didn't. You think he would know if he saw you from seeing my Facebook pictures and stuff of you and I? Together. I kind of hid. I kind of hid a little bit, like a celebrity. Because see, well, I, I, well, that's what happens when celebrities see their own shirts. You know what? What scared me worse. Was that he wouldn't recognize me? Yeah, <laughs> I was. I was more afraid of going over. Hey, and then him hey, going. See that Lucas on there? That's me. Hey, and man. him going. Cool. I got this at Goodwill, and then yeah. just, walk, <laughs> you know, just walking off. <laughs> I, awesome. I was more afraid of that than I was of him actually recognizing me. I thought I'm, I'm going to look like a jerk up here if I walk up and go, huh? Well, huh? I, huh? <laughs> yeah. I screenshotted a picture when you told me that story. I figured it, who it might have been because because I've actually been at the Bull and Thistle with. Mr. David Paul Scantlin a couple times. Yeah. And I was at Davo, famously known as Davo. And so that was Davo rocking the One Lane Road podcast yeah. shirt. I but had we, I had to ask Kara, was this the guy that I was I was trying to yeah. I didn't I didn't want him to recognize me or not recognize me. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I just didn't look at him. <laughs> he loves the show, man. I know he was caught he was listening for a while, as I told you. Yeah. And he I I don't know if he's I haven't seen him in in a in a minute. But uh I just did something I hate. I hate that phrase in a minute, and I don't know why I said it. It's such a <laughs> dishy term. But um, I hadn't seen him in a while. How yeah. about that? Uh, I'm glad you brought that up because I was actually going to forget that. We've got a lot of love from some of our listeners this week, like Travis when he posted that video. Yeah. He's wearing the OLR yeah. shirt. Um, my friend Carlos uh, from Clarksville, he was uh, going to Zany's to watch Rob Schneider yeah. last week, and he had the OLR shirt on. Nice. Uh, Derek Woolbright. Uh-huh. Um, I think they were going to a yeah they went to a Corey Smith concert at Tin Roof in Nashville Friday night yeah wearing the one lane road you know, I, you know I've got mine up there in the closet and I keep wanting to put it on and wear it but I think ah it'd be all right as long as people didn't realize didn't connect me with the yeah the people but well that's like at the uh, fundraiser we had like we never neither one of us wore right. shirts yeah and Lindy's like why are you doing that I was like isn't that like a I don't know it's like that's a kind of like who does that yeah, kind of deal? Kind of a trashy thing to do. Yeah. I, I don't know. If, I don't know if it's I, right or not. But. I wore it to work the other day because I mean, you know, yeah. I wear just old shirts to work a lot of times. And when I was like, "Oh, yeah, now you wear it," <laughs> you know, because he was giving me the yeah, biggest hard, hard time. time. Yeah, but you know, I, I take it back to one thing. Uh, Cole Swindell was at an award show one day, and I tweeted, "I was like, sweet hat, eagle eagle maniac," because he had mm-hmm. a Cole Swindell hat on. I'm like, right. who wears your own stuff to the award show? Yeah, you know. I'm so weird about stuff like that. When I go to a Shooter Jennings show, I wear a Cross Canadian Ragweed shirt. I don't even wear a Shooter shirt. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And vice versa. When I yeah. go, and what's cool? Shooter's always like, oh, I love Ragweed. Yeah. Ragweed's always, Cody's always like, oh, awesome yeah, I love shirt. You. Well, you don't want a fangirl in front of them, too. Yeah. 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 And I don't do that mm. for anybody. <laughs> Coming back to all that crap. I get fired up about that sometimes. <laughs> I, about fangirl and you know, Why don't you stick your own hobbies and I'll stick to mine? All right. Anyway. But yeah, I do feel like a little bit of a. A little bit of a homer, so to speak, or like I'm drinking my own Kool Aid when we're out. Yeah, shirts. a little bit, right? I mean, I, yeah. I put it on. I, I thought about mowing the yard out here in it the other day, and I thought, well, I hate to just relegate it to mowing the yard, but I want to wear it out. Yeah. And then I was thinking, if, if I just put tape over my name, would it be all right? I don't yeah. <laughs> just take my name out of it. <laughs> I thought you were going to put tape on my name and wear it full time a couple times anyway in the last <laughs> 19 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought, I ain't going to lie to you. I thought about. Taping mine out and just giving it to you a couple of times there <laughs> yeah. once or twice. Yeah. yeah. It, it's just, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I mean. Ah, it's fun. It's fun, guys. It's There's ups and downs like there is isn't anything, but it's a lot of it. It's a good time. Yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe you guys listen to this. If y'all don't go with us this hour and 39 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if y'all can give us a feedback on what's susceptible for us wearing our own shirts, because I genuinely yeah, somebody, do not know that answer. Somebody let us know if. If I'm allowed to wear my shirt we, out. Because I've still not even put it on yet. I, <laughs> I, I, I really want to. I've got two. And I had Lindsay, because you know how the way they're made, I wasn't sure how they'd wash yeah. and dry. 
So I had her not dry one and dry the other one. Yeah. And they definitely shrink. Oh, do they really? Yeah. Oh, I may not be able to fit in mine anymore then. Well, dude, I don't know because I got a 2X because I'm fat. And, uh, Preach it, brother. Yeah, man. And the, the, but the 2X that she didn't dry is humongous. Mm-hmm. So I actually wear the one she dried just a little bit more. But. My uncle rubbed my love handle the other day. He said, what's this? That's somebody wanting to get slapped in the mouth is what that is. <laughs> Touch it one more time, I dare you. I'm not even, I don't even He did enough. it again, though. I didn't slap him. <laughs> you know what's funny about that, uh, going back to that pizza and salad thing? Yeah. That was what's so ironic about it. Cause when I heard on the radio, I felt so guilty that I passed the salad up to get like it's like when you're in church, yeah, and the preacher's talking about some bad stuff that you've been doing in your life yeah, that you just did last like, night. Yeah, shit, he see me out. Yeah. <laughs> is he talking oh, to me right now? He's talking to me right now. That's uh-huh. how I felt when I, I was like, I was coming across the Nim Road, and I was like, I did that. Come on, Billy Mac, yeah, don't, don't, don't me down. Don't, right? me, don't me under the bus right now. We're eating that party pizza. Yeah, but hey, man, I think we need to cut this. Yeah, right man. now before we, everybody gets tired. Of yeah, listening I know y'all. Time. Y'all complain to us, or not? I don't complain, but a couple of y'all. Have, Told us, hey, that hour and fifteen is where you need to be. But we had a, we had a list here, and we were going to do it. Well, regardless, to our listeners, this was Lucas and I's couch session tonight, kinda couch time. Well, a little bit because, like I said, it's just been getting a little bit like a job, like a job, a little and, bit workish. And when I got here tonight, and we took a ride, and I said, let's just let's just cut it back to the basics. Mm-hmm. And James Hatcher says to quit podcasting about the podcast. Which I can't even wrap my mind around what, what that even means. What he means by that. But he says we That's talk, what it is, James. He, he said, Y'all talk about the podcast a lot. Like I don't see how people Well can that's relate. what it is, James. He's like, <laughs> how do people how can people relate to like how y'all are feeling about the podcast? It's like, well, y'all are the ones listening. You should be able to relate to the same thing we can relate to. Yeah. He said, Do you get what I'm saying? I said, Hell no, I don't get what you're saying. Mm-hmm. A little bit. I I, I lay him with the argument. I was like, Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, no, but if he that's how he feels, he's a listener. James is yeah. every week listener, so maybe we should take. Oh know. yeah, but this is definitely here. We are asking for it, and we're giving somebody crap about it. Like I said, we love bringing guests on. We love doing all that stuff that we do, but we just wanted to strip it down back to the basics of what Lucas and I wanted to do when we started from the original. When Lucas said, "Let's do a podcast," let's just do it. And people like our stories a lot better for the majority. Yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is this was a genuine. Uh, we took notes, bullet points tonight. Yeah, that was more bullet points than trying to figure out what we were going to say. So no I, order, I, boom, boom. Just do that's it. What I, you know, a lot of it was ad lib that it wasn't supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Why, that's why we're at an hour and forty one. And yeah. I apologize. I know Kara's probably patiently waiting for you to get upstairs. Oh yeah, to text it's me twice. 30, it's thirty seven minutes past my bedtime right Holy now. Holy crap! Yeah. So anyway, guys, we appreciate y'all listening. If y'all are still listening, yes, that's one lane road podcast. See you next week.